बाहुल लाइन से अंदर आपसे मिलते हैं सर लाइव स्टार्ट है सर यूट्यूब पर फिनिश ना स्पॉटलाइट जैसे ना वीडियो स्पॉटलाइट जैसे या वेलकम टू नीट ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन क्वेश्चन पेपर डिस्कशन एंड एनालिसिस पेपर डिस्कशन विल स्टार्ट विथ बॉटनी मिस्टर सतीश एंड मिस्टर गोवर्धन will initiate the paper discussion of what satish sir good evening everyone so this is satish kumar from excellentia and botany faculty and today we are going to discuss about our neat 2021 paper so here we are i'm discussing about the n6 code paper so in this today's exam so most of the questions we got in the easy format only so like nearly 30 to 35 questions we got easy mode or and three questions we got moderate and remaining questions are very easy range so the paper expected from the ncert only all questions we got from exact ncert textbook points so let us now discuss about each and every question from the today's exam okay so now we have to discuss the first question Plants follow different pathways in response to environment. Actually, this question is from Plant Growth and Development. So, Plant Growth and Development question. So, plants follow their different pathways. So, according to the environment, the plants that can change their structure it is known as plasticity. So, the answer for one out of one question plasticity. Example for plasticity in cotton, heterophyte. So that is about one out of one. So the question is mostly it is a memory based question, right? So we we'll go for the next question. In spite of yeah, which of the following stages of meiosis involved in the division of centromere? So students, this question is mainly from the meiosis two phase. and in the meiosis 2 especially in anaphase 2 we can observe the division of centromere so the centromere it is like this in anaphase 1 so whereas in anaphase 2 the centromere split into chromatids so these chromatids they move to their respective poles so the answer 
for this question B. Meiotic division to N of S2 splitting of chromatid takes place. So this is a question from cell cycle and cell division. So next question, genera like Selaginella and Salvinia. So these are pteridophytes. So very, very most easy question. So very easy question from this exam is the 104 question. So Selaginella and Salvinia, they mainly produce two kinds of spores. We can call them as heterosporous pteridophytes. Homosporous means they produce only one kind of spores. Heterosporous, they produce two kinds. We can call them as heterosporous pteridophytes. Example, Selaginella and Salvinia. So the answer for 104, C. C is the answer for 104 question. Next one. Next question, mutation in plant cells can be induced by, so mutation means a sudden change in the genetic information of DNA and these mutations in plant cells mainly induced by gamma rays. That's why some plants, they are mainly growing near nuclear test sites. So to produce mutations, so we can call that one as mutation breeding. So a very good example for mutation breeding, we can call the uh, Ebola Moscow's escalators, uh, what we can say, ladies finger variety is the first discovered variety from gamma rays. So the answer for 106 is B. B is the answer for 106 question. So next question. When gene targeting involving gene amplification is attempted in an individual's tissue to treat disease. So this is also a very, very easy question and the NCRT line question. So the answer is gene therapy. Gene therapy is mainly useful to, what we can say to, Identify the particular disorder and we can correct the disease disorder by using a particular enzyme. You can call this one as gene therapy. So 107, the answer is A. Next one. Yeah, very, very simple question. This one also. So most of the questions from today's exam, they are easy level as well as what we can say. One or two questions are moderate level. And here, this question, when the centromere is situated, in the middle. So this is the centromere. If the centromere is situated in the middle, we can call this chromosome metacentric chromosome. Metacentric chromosome contain two equal arms. The arms are equal in metacentric chromosome. The answer would be D. So very, very easy. So one or eight question, the answer would be D. Next question. So match the following. So this is the first match the following question. First question in N6 code. So lenticels, they are mainly helpful for the exchange of gases. If you know lenticels, the answer is easy. Direct, direct one here. If you know one option, the answer would be easy. Lenticels. So we can call the lenticels. They are mainly helpful for the gaseous exchange, A3, or cambium. Pelogen B1, C4, secondary cortex pelodum, cork, shivering. So cork, it is impervious to water and it cannot permit the water into the cell. So the answer would be A. So if you know A as exchange of gases, so easy to pick the answer. Very, very easy question. This one also. Let's go for the next question. Which of the following is an incorrect statement? Micro bodies are present both in plants and animals. Actually, the statement is 100% correct. The perinuclear space forms a barrier between the materials present inside the nucleus, right? Correct question, correct option. Nuclear pores acts as a passage. So this is a structure of a nucleus. So the nucleus mainly contain nuclear pores, genetic material. These nuclear pores, they act as a barrier for the entry of substances. So C also correct. Mature CO2 element nucleus is absent. So the incorrect statement is D. So D is our answer because in CO2 elements, conspicuous nucleus is absent. So the CO2 elements, they mainly depend upon the nucleus of companion cells. So textbook question and NCRP point only. Let's go for the next question, students. Gamma are present in. So this is the second most very easy question in today's paper. 
So gamma, gamma they are asexual birds. Gamma they are asexual birds, mainly present in liverworts, bryophytes. So the answer is C. In gymnosperms, gamma absent. In mosses, most of the students they will confuse here. Mosses, no gamma formation. Mosses they mainly reproduce by protonema. This is juvenile stage. And the adult stage of mosses is gametophore. So most of the students, little bit twisted here. For one and question, it is somewhat twisted question. But directly, if you know the NCRT statement, easy to pick the answer. Gamma are present in liverworts. The answer is C. Example, Marcantia. Right, next, we'll go for the next question. A typical angiosperm embryo sac. So we'll just see the diet of students once. So one minute, within one minute, I'll complete. So this is the embryo sac. So the embryo sac contains antipodals, external and central nuclei is deployed. So what is the question here? A typical angiosperm sac, embryo sac at maturity is contained one, two, three, three cells here, fourth cell here, fifth cell, sixth cell, and seventh cell. So the question is the diagrammatic question, but it's not direct diagram depending question. So they gave based upon the diagram as theoretical question. So a mature angiosperm embryo sac contains seven cell nucleus. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight nucleated. Very, very easy question from the sexual reproduction of covering plants chapter. One fifteen question. The answer is D. D is the answer for 150. Next. So this is also from sexual reproduction. This time from sexual reproduction, we got two questions. One is the embryo set, another one is pollination. So just see the pollination. One second. So transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma is known as pollination. So pollination, if the pollination takes place, so this is the same plant. Same plant with two different types of flowers. So if the transfer of pollen grains takes place in between flower A to flower B, it is known as gitanogamy. So most of the students here also, they confused. So this is the plant X and this is the plant Y. So this is different plant. So if you are having any confusion, you have to draw the diagram for this question. So the transfer of pollen grains from X plant to Y plant, two different plants, genetically two different plants is known as xenogamy. It is completely cross-pollination. So D is the correct answer here. The term used for transfer of pollen grains from anthers of one plant during pollination brings genetically different type. Two plants are genetically different. X plant and Y plant. It is known as xenogamy. If it is takes place between A flower and B flower, same plant, it is another. So that is about 160 question. Next. Which of the following are not Secondary metabolite. So here, yeah, most of the students they considered which of the following are secondary. So the question is not secondary metabolites. So here, yeah, the amino acids and glucose direct answer. This one is amino acids and glucose. They are not secondary metabolites. Whether in blasting curcumin, they are drugs, rubber, gums, morphine, and codeine. So remaining all are secondary metabolites. So not in the sense answer A is the correct one. Right. Next question. The hormone, the plant hormone used to destroy weeds in a tree. So here, the important point we have to remember from this chapter is from plant growth and development, we got two questions this year. Last year, we got three questions. This year, two questions we got. The hormone does destroy weeds. The hormone does destroy weeds. 2,4-D. 2,4-dichlorophenoxyacetic acid. It is mainly useful to remove the dicotyls. Removal of dicotyls in monocot plants. Monocot plants like cereals. So these plants, they these 2,4-D, it cannot cause harm to our plant. It mainly kills the weeds. So the answer for 119 is B. The plant hormone that destroys weeds is 2,4-D. So next question. 
which of the following algae 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 plant kingdom question so traditional biology algae is always important there are mainly three types of algae and the reason first of all you have to know the reserved food material green algae reserved food material glycogen and oil droplets brown algae reserved food material laminarin and mannitol red algae if you know the reserved food material the answer is very easy so here the reserved food material mannitol is mainly present in ectocarpus it is a brown algae remaining these b and c options they are green algae a option is red algae so the answer is ectocarpus that is b mannitol reserved food material laminarin and mannitol in brown algae next question The site of perception of plants during photoperiodism. So, so at which position the plants they mainly receive the light perception that is leaf. The major part of the photosynthesis that is leaf. So, very simple question, but it's like a twisted question. Most of the students they won't study the basic level, but if you know the subject perfectly, you can do this bit. Otherwise, it is somewhat difficult question for the students, right? So the site of perception of light in plants during photoperiodism, that is leaf. C is the correct answer, option C. Diadalbus stamens are found in. So the stamens, they are mainly classified based upon the arrangement of bundles. Monoadalbus stamens means if the stamens are arranged in the form of one bundle, monoadalbus, example, China rose. Option C, China rose, monoadalbus stamen, one bundle. Right, citrus, China rose. So, option A, citrus, many number of bundles, polyadalbus. Diadalbus, arrangement of stamens, two bundles, that is pea plant. So, the answer in this question, 126B, pea plant contain two forms of bundles, and these two bundles, one bundle contain nine stamens, they are in fused format, another one contain vichyas free. Total two types of bundles we can observe that is nine plus per condition P plant, diadal plus stamen. So answer B. Next, so match the following, second match the following question in this paper. Cells with active cell division A2, very stomatic tissue, A2, D is the answer. A2, direct A1 here, A3 here, A4 here. So direct question. Cells with active cell division capacity, A2, peristomatic, B4, cells performing similar structure and function, simple tissue, C1, tissue having different types of cells, vascular tissue, xylem and phloem, dead cells with highly thickened walls and narrow, that is scleroid. So the answer for 127 question is D. So simple question, if you know the cell division capacity of meristem, it is easy to pick the answer. Next question. So, another match the following question. It is mainly based upon the cell organics, cell unit of life. Cristate, thylakoids, centromere, and cisterne. So, here, if you know cisterne as disc shaped sacs in Golgi, D2, D2, right? Centromere, primary constriction in chromosome, C1. So, this is the answer, B. A3, crystal, infold leaves in mitochondria, thylakoids, flattened membrane sacs in stroma of plastids, syndromia, primary construction in chromosome, and sister net, disc shaped sacs in Golgi apparatus. So, this is the answer. So, 128 question, the answer is B. So, this, this is all the. So, complete the flow chart on central dogma. Central dogma, it is very, very important and also easy concept so dna undergoes replication and synthesize dna so here they gave a replication synthesis of mrna from dna that is transcription mrna to proteins translation so protein the answer is replication transcription Replication, transcription, transduction, protein. Transduction, translation, replication, protein. So, replication, transcription, 
Actually, here D C it is translation, it's not replication. So the answer is D. Replication, transcription, translation, protein. So the answer for 130 is D. Okay, next one. The first stable product in carbon dioxide fixation in sorghum. So sorghum, it is a C4 plant. If you know sorghum as a C4 plant, you can pick the answer as four carbon containing oxalic acetic acid. So the answer is A. Whereas in C3 plants, the first stable product is phosphoglyceric acid, glycolysis end product, pyruvic acid, Krebs cycle intermediate product, succinic acid. So easy to eliminate here. If you know sorghum as a C4 plant, the answer would be four carbon containing oxalic acetic acid. 131 A is the answer. So another match the following question. Protoplast fusion, protoplast fusion, tomato, cross between potato and tomato, tomato. It is an unsuccessful protoplast. Plant tissue culture, totipotency, ability of a plant cell to generate new plant, totipotency. Very strong culture, it is mainly produced, useful for production of virus free plants. Then the answer would be so micro propagation, soma clones. So protoplast fusion, so we can go with C meristem culture, C4, A2, B1, C4, and D3. This is the answer. 132, option A is the answer. 132. During the purification process, so this is the question from biotechnology principles and process in the isolation of DNA. So DNA is mainly precipitated by using chilled ethanol. So the answer, very, very simple. The answer is A option, DNA, mainly precipitated under chilled ethanol overnight to extract the DNA by spooling process. So 133 question, the answer is A. Which of the following is a correct sequence of step in a PCR? So correct sequence of step in PCR, denaturation temperature, annealing extension, direct textbook question. If you know the diagram, the question and the answer very, very easy. 134 question, the uh, option is D, denaturation, annealing, then extension. Next, 135, cohesion, attraction among water molecules, A2, adhesion, attraction towards polar surface, B4, A2, B4. So here we are having the answer as D. Surface tension, more attraction in liquid phase, gutation, water loss in liquid phase. So these are the Major questions we are discussing now. So, next phase of the questions will be conducted by the senior faculty. Thank you, students. Thank you. One second, sir. So, among the questions that you have discussed, how many questions are directly from NCR? Till now, sir, from these 35 questions, 35 questions directly from NCR. So, what will be the uh, number of questions that the students will directly do if they have read the text. All questions, most probably they will do all questions, sir. 50 questions. How many from first year and how many from second year? From the first year topic, we got nearly 29, sir. 29 to 30 questions we got. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Finish your condition spot rate, please, Eva.
సార్ విజయబాబు సార్ మీ దగ్గర క్వశ్చన్ పేపర్ వచ్చిందా స్టార్ట్ దిస్ ఇస్ క్వశ్చన్ నెంబర్ ఓకే సార్ ఐ స్టార్ట్ విజయబాబు సార్ యూ కంటిన్యూ ఇన్ ద మీన్ వైల్ will go over then sir get ready okay and uh, please also in, uh, share how many questions came from ncert textbook how many from first year and how many from second year yes yeah uh, reading students and parents and team uh, today is neat examination out of 145 questions are asked from uh, uh, 45 questions are asked from the zoology and uh, except two questions 43 questions are from directly from ncert directly from ncrt in that 19 questions are taken from first year and uh, 26 questions are taken from the second year and difficulty of the paper if you observe uh, it is very easy except the two questions the so most of the questions are easy and moderate level okay then we'll discuss the paper uh, i have q6 code the question number 151 which is given as erythropoietin so erythropoietin hormone which is stimulated by the formation of rbc is produced by erythropoietin is a hormone which is produced by kidney in kidney particularly which cells produces juxta glomerular cells of the kidney produces this hormone which acts on the bone marrow to stimulate the production of rbc to increase the rbc generally this hormone is produced in hypoxic <laughs> in hypoxic conditions uh, when the level of oxygen is less like uh, when we move into the altitude uh, higher altitudes so during uh, altitude sickness at that time this hormone is produced so alpha cells of uh, pancreas they produces uh, glucagon the cells of uh, rostral adrenal uh, hypophysis uh, they actually produces the this uh, six hormones and the cells of the bone marrow actually they are hemopoietic cells it produces all the type of the blood cells but erythropoietin is produced by juxta glomerular cells now let's see the question number 152 so which of the following belongs to the family muscidae so muscidae the suffix idea is the family suffix and musca is a genus and which is a scientific name of musca that is a house fly musca domestica so the right answer is house fly is it not the cockroach periplaneta americana not the firefly not the grasshopper so it is musca domestica so muscidae so right answer is a house fly now let's see this question number 153 question number 153 so it is question is asked from the animal kingdom so the list one consisting of scientific names and list two consisting of common names of the organisms physalia physalia commonly called as portuguese man of war 
Faisal is called as a Portuguese man of war. So here you have two options, A2 and A2. So answer must be between A and C. Limulus, Limulus is a living fossil. It is a living fossil. It is also called as thin crab. So three, so B3, B3. And Ankylos stoma duodenale, which is a common name is hookworm. So option four. So C4 and Pinktada, it is a pearl oyster. So D1. So the right answer is a option A is the correct one. Yeah. For effective treatment of disease and early diagnosis and understanding its pathophysiology is very important. Which of the following molecular diagnostic techniques is very useful for early detection? So generally there are three techniques are there. What are the three techniques? ELISA, recombinant DNA technology and PCR. Polymerase chain reaction. So these are the molecular diagnostic techniques. So here in the given answer, ELISA is the correct one, not hybridoma technology, not the Western blot technique, southern blot technique. Are generally used hybridization uh, hybridization technique is generally used to couple the uh, probe with the dna and western blotting technique and southern blotting technique for the separation of the proteins and the rnas dna southern blotting for dna western blot from the proteins so which is the molecular diagnostic technique three elisa pcr and recombinant dna technology so here in the given option a is a elisa is a correct one yeah coming to this question number 155 which of the following is an example for hormonal IUDs. IUDs, intrauterine devices, which are placed in the uterus, they are basically three types, non-medicated, copper, and hormonal. Non-medicated, lipis loop, copper, so already here given, it is three, CUT, multi-load 375, CU7. Uh, so these three are copper, copper IUDs. And hormonal IUDs, LNG, 20, levonorgestrel, 20. So that is the right one. Yeah, coming to question number 151, uh, it is botany related question. Yeah, coming to question number 157. With regards to insulin, choose the correct option. C peptide is not mature insulin. So mature insulin stand, not this is the correct one. This one is correct one. The insulin produced by recombinant DNA technology has C peptide. No. The insulin produced by recombinant DNA technology has only A and B. So wrong option is B. B is the wrong one. And, okay. and C peptide. Yes, insulin is produced in the form of pro-insulin, which has A, B, C strand. So this is also the right one. A peptide and B peptide of insulin are interconnected by disulfide bridges. Yes, this is also the right one. Only the wrong one is the right one. And the A, so option A is a You can see here. So this is about the uh, insulin one. Now coming to question number 158. Which one of the following organism bears hollow and pneumatic bones? Long bones. So hollow or pneumatic long bones are the characteristic of the birds. That to flying birds, not the flight place birds. Macropus. Macropus is a kangaroo. It is a mammal. So it doesn't have the, any pneumatic bones. Ornithorhynchus, duckbill platypus. It is also a mammal. So no pneumatic bones. Neophron. Neophron is a vulture, flying one. So flying bird. So it has hemidactylus, lizard, lizard. So in that also there is no pneumatic bone. The right answer is neophron, vulture. The person with AB blood group are called the universal recipient. This is due to. So why we call as a universal recipient? So universal donor means they should consist no antigens on their RBC. Universal recipients means they should not have the, any antibodies in their plasma. Because whenever blood transmission is carrying out, we look for two things. One is donors antigens and recipients antibodies. If any recipient who doesn't have the, any type of the antibodies, so there's no chances of agglutination of the blood. So that's why 
ab blood group people they have both a and b antigen on rbc but there is no antibodies in their plasma so that is the right answer so absence of antibodies in the plasma so presence of antibodies no it doesn't have absence of antigens on this no they have antigens and absence of a and b antigen in plasma plasma never contains antigens so the right answer is option b absence of antibodies anti a and anti b in the plasma that is the right one okay yeah which enzyme is responsible for the conversion of inactive fibrinogen into fibrin so in blood clot three steps are there formation of prothrombin or prothrombinase second one is conversion of prothrombin into thrombin third step is the fibrinogen conversion of fibrinogen into fibrin it is a cascading reaction so end product of the first one it act like a catalyst in the second reaction and end product of the second one it act like a catalyst in the third one so in second second step prothrombin converts into thrombin so that thrombin converts the fibrinogen into fibrin so the right answer is thrombin so the end product of second reaction is the thrombin and that converts the fibrinogen into fibrin not epinephrine not thrombokinase not the renin so epinephrine it is adrenal medullary harm thrombokinase it uh, mainly uh, clot uh, it, di uh, it dilates the clots and uh, and renin it is a uh, juxta glomerular apparatus so gg cells it produces the renin now we'll see this question number 161 which of the following statements wrongly uh, represent the nature of smooth muscles smooth muscles means communicating among the cells is performed by intercalated tests in there are three types of muscles smooth cardiac and uh, skeletal muscles so intercalated tests are the characteristic features of cardiac muscle so this is wrongly representing because communication among the cells is performed by intercalated tests that is in uh, cardiac muscles not the smooth muscles so this is actually the wrong option coming to second these muscles are present in the wall of blood vessels yes they are also called as visceral muscles because they are present in the visceral organs like the blood vessels walls of the blood vessels so these muscles have no striation they are also called as uh, unstriated muscles yes smooth muscles are also no striations and they are involuntary muscles also so these three are right so the wrong one intercalated test which is present in the cardiac muscles so option a is the wrong statement so wrongly present one is this okay coming to question number 162 which is asked uh, about the uh, animal kingdom so metamerism segmentation canal system water canal system comb plates nidoblast sting cells so metamerism is a characteristic feature of three phylums annelida arthropoda and mollusca so here it is given only annelida so a3 a3 there are two options are there and coming to canal system water canal system is present in poriferans there is a unique feature of poriferans so four yes b4 b4 comb plates they are also called as tnda so uh tnofora comb plates they are tnofora tnofora why the name is given because of presence of comb plates so c2 c2 So only option this one and nidoblast sting cells, which are the characteristic of cilentrata. Another name for the cilentrata it is nidaria due to the presence of nidoblast. So D one. So the right option is A. So metamerism, annelida, canal system, periphera, comb plates, uh, which are present in the uh, tinofora, nidoblast in cilentrata. Okay. So this is botany question. Yeah, one sixty-six. The partial pressure in mm is of oxygen and carbon dioxide and alveoli at the site of the diffusion. So alveoli, so their oxygen levels are high and carbon dioxide levels are low. So obviously the atmosphere, how much is there? One fifty-nine mm is the. When it comes to lungs, it is one not four. The partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli is one not four mm hg, and whereas carbon dioxide is forty mm hg. So very clearly it is given. So easily can answer. So it is from the respiratory gases. So oxygen one not four mm hg. Partial pressure of carbon dioxide is forty mm hg. 
yeah so which is chronic autoimmune disorder of affecting the neuromuscular junction leading to fatigue weakness and paralysis of skeletal muscles is called so myasthenia gravis gout arthritis muscular dystrophy muscular dystrophy it is a genetic disorder related to the uh, gene or protein dystrophy so it is not the autoimmune disorder arthritis it is inflammation of the joints it does not leads to any fatigue or weakness or paralysis gout is the accumulation of uric acid in the joints so this is also the not the right one so right answer is a myasthenia gravis so it is autoimmune disorder in which acetylcholine receptors bind to the uh, acetylcholine uh, bind to the receptors which are present at the neuromuscular junction which continuously stimulate them lead to fatigue weakness and paralysis so this is autoimmune disorder any disease that is due to uh, due to our immune system imbalance then it is considered as a auto immune disorder auto immune disorder yeah now we'll see this question walls iud's vasectomy tubectomy these are the different types of the contraceptives and what is the function there so walls walls are generally used by the females uh, they are covered the cervix to block the sperm so entry of the sperm through the cervix so a one only one option is there very easy so iud's what is the function of the iud's they mainly promote the phagocytosis of sperm particularly uh, non medicated iud so b3 and vasectomy so it is a vasectomy cutting off vas differentia in males removal of vas difference so c2 c2 and tubectomy cutting off fallopian tube so removal of fallopian tube so d4 so option D is the correct one. Option D is the correct one. To question number seventy four, one seventy four. Receptors for the binding of uh, sperm binding in mammals are present on. So generally, when sperm is enter into the female reproductive system, first it reaches to the um, vagina, vagina to uh, uterus, uterus to fallopian tube. and there in the fallopian tube first it binds to the corona radiata there it actually releases the enzymes then after that it binds to zona pellucida so receptors for sperm are present on zona pellucida which is covering the secondary oocyte 
so not the perivital in space not the vital in membrane so it is zona pellucida so the layer which is covering the secondary oocyte that is the right one yeah so which of the following characteristic is incorrect incorrect with respect to cockroach in female 7th 8th and 9th sterna together form the genital pouch yes genital pouch in female cockroach is formed by 7th 8th and 9th sterna so this is a right one so this one it is the right one and 10th abdominal segment in both the sexes bears a pair of anal sarsi yes so they have two segmented structures in both males and females that is called anal sarsi that is also the right a ring of gastric ck is present at the junction of midgut and hindgut no so a ring of gastric ck is present but not between the midgut and hindgut they are present between the foregut and midgut so this one is wrong and hypopharynx lies within a cavity enclosed by the mouth parts so a cavity is there that is called preoral cavity and which is covered which is enclosed by a mouth parts in that pharynx or tongue is present so this is also the right one so wrong statement c so gastric ck are present between the foregut and midgut but not between the midgut and the hindgut so the wrong answer is this one what may related aspergillus yeah venereal diseases so what do you mean by venereal diseases or sexually transmitted diseases can spread through using sterile needles so you know they should transmit through sexual organs venereal diseases sexually transmitted diseases so either blood or through sexual contact so it is not using by sterile needles so stds are transmitted through non sterile needles not by the sterile needles so this is wrong the statement is wrong can spread through no transmission of blood from the infected person yes if blood transmission is done from an infected person to a non infected person then it is transmits right so infected mother to fetus yes this is also right okay coming to kissing and inheritance so inheritance no chance is there but what about the kissing kissing it may be transmit some uh, disorders like herpes simplex virus if the herpes uh, sores are formed on the mouth so chances are there so we can consider this is also possibility is there so b c and d so b c d only so option d is the correct one so third option kissing uh it is the chances are less but can be consider yeah coming to question number 179 yeah select the favorable condition required for the formation of oxyhemoglobin at alveoli so at alveoli uh, where oxygen levels are high that promotes the binding of oxygen with hemoglobin means it should have high partial pressure of oxygen and low partial pressure of carbon dioxide and less uh, h plus and low temperature so this should required so it is at high po2 and high po2 partial pressure of oxygen low po partial pressure of carbon dioxide and less h plus and low temperature so this is a correct one oppositely is occur at uh, tissues where partial pressure of oxygen is low and uh, carbon dioxide is high h plus ions are high and uh, temperature is high so where dissociation of hemoglobin is occur so formation of hemoglobin is occur at alveoli where partial pressure of oxygen is high and remaining factors like partial pressure of carbon dioxide h plus and temperature is low a very simple question from the digestion succus enterocus what is a succus enterocus it is another name for intestinal juice intestinal juice is also called as succus enterocus not the gastric juice gastric juice it is a uh, juice uh, it is a uh, secretion of gastric glands chyme uh, par uh, partially digested acidic food pancreatic juice is the secretions of pancreatic pancreas yeah now intestinal juice is a succus enterocus okay across uh, between the male and female both heterozygous for sickle cell anemia the gene what will be the percentage of the progeny will affected or diseased so 
both are heterozygous both male and female are heterozygous meaning as so it is so what is the chances are there father hba and hba and hbs hbs crossing with mother who is also hba and hbs so this is a genotype of father genotype of mother so they have hpa and hbs two alleles genotype hba hbs so affected means only one time possibility is there means which has hbs hbs so you can see this cross so first one this cross like this normal this cross like this carrier hba hbs carrier hba hba normal hba hbs hba normal only one chance is there that is hbs hbs so it is 1 by 4 it is nothing but that 25% only the chance is 25% so when they are heterozygous so chances are 1 by 4 or 25% okay so this is botany question now we go to the bio fortification yeah so where is the sphincter of od sphincter of od is present at opening of hepato pancreatic duct into the duodenum so sphincter of od it is a sphincter which regulate the secretion of bile juice and pancreatic juice so it is present at the junction of hepato pancreatic duct and duodenum so hepato pancreatic duct which is opening to the duodenum there it is guarded by the sphincter of od so gastro esophageal junction so that is cardiac uh, uh, cardiac sphincter junction of jejunum and duodenum duodenum so between jejunum and duodenum there is no sphincter ileocecal junction ileocecal valve is there and sphincter also there so the right one sphincter of od that is present at this region so that is present at this region bio fortification of the crops is explained by the botany lecture okay so this is botany question one more yeah so this is related to zoology junctions junctions so identify the types of cells junction that help to stop the leakage of substances so actually epithelial cells have there are three types of the junctions one is adhering junctions second one is tight junctions and third one is the gap junctions so what is the function of tight junctions they prevent the leakage adhering junction they helps in attaching the adjacent cells and gap junctions for communication so to stop the leakage so which one so that is a tight junction tight junction they stop the leakage another one is a uh, second one which helps in facilitate the communication that is a gap junctions so the answer is d adhering junction they helps in attaching to the adjacent cells so 187 botany question yeah coming to 188 zoology question uh strategies for enhancement in food production so which is a not a step in the multiple ovulation embryo transfer technique moet so in moet what is done so first they'll take it about a, a, a superior female cow cow is fertilized by artificial insemination so generally what they do generally they take up a superior female to that they inject of uh, fsh like hormone so here it is given the cow is administered with lh like hormone lh does not help in the super ovulation super ovulation is occur because of the fsh because of fsh then after that the female co produces 6 uh, to 8 eggs uh, which may be fertilized by elite bull or it can be carried out artificial insemination allow it for the fert uh, fertilization and further development when fertilized eggs are reaches to the 8 to 32 cell cell, cell stage and they take out uh, non surgically and transferred into the surrogate mother so in this only this step here lh it is given that is the wrong one if it is it should be fsh follicular stimulating hormone so 68 cells at a time that is right 8 to 32 cells transfused into the surrogate mother right artificial insemination is also carried out that is also the right one 
yeah coming to question related to earthworm so it serves as a covering for mouth it serves as a covering for mouth yes what is a prostomium prostomium is a uh, a flap like structure which is present at the anterior side of the earthworm like if it is a earthworm so anterior part the mouth is covered by this flap like structure so which is covering the mouth that is the right one it helps to open the uh, open cracks in the soil into which it can crawl yes that is also the right one and it is one of the sensory structure yeah it has some uh, thar, uh, touch receptors and uh, uh, thermo receptors are there yes it is the first body of segment no the first body of segment is peristomium not the prostomium so here it is given prostomium this first segment is called peristomium so this one is wrong one so right answer is a b c only not the d <laughs> so the right answer so the right answer is a b c option b yeah next we'll see the question number uh, 190 so it is asked in the chapter population organisms and populations and uh, ecosystem adaptation balance rule physiological adaptation behavioral adaptation biochemical adaptation kangaroo rat desert lizard marine fish at depth and polar sea what is allen's rules allen rules generally it says about the uh, uh, the warm blooded animals which are living in the colder regions the colder regions they have shorter extremities to to prevent the heat loss from the body so if you observe among this polar seal actually they have a thick coat which prevent the heat loss from the body so allen's rule can be uh, connected to fourth one polar seal so a4 all options are there yeah physiological adaptation so physiological adaptation uh, so what is the physiological adaptation so they show some type of the uh, reactions which helps in uh, adapt in the extreme conditions like kangaroo rat which lives in the deserts okay it uh, it does not uses a normal water from the bot uh, normal water it does not take the outside water but how it uh, meets it needs by taking the metabolic water which is a physiological adaptation so one so four one b one yes and behavioral adaptation like desert lizard so what it do it shows a uh, sun bath like you know that so whenever uh, the its body temperature is low then it enters into the sunlight and warm up their body and if it is a body temperature is higher than the required one again it moves into the shades okay so this is behavioral adaptation which observed in the desert lizard okay so it is called as a basking so biochemical adaptation so the organisms which are living in extreme conditions so they shows the biochemical adaptations like marine fishes which are living at the very uh, deep oceans they have to face extreme uh, pressure conditions so that can be maintained by undergoing the biochemical adaptation so d3 so the right answer is a4 b1 c3 d c2 d3 so option a is the correct one yeah now you see this now you see this these are the name of the organism which so these are the diseases which is caused by the organisms so filariasis it is caused by ukraria bankrofti a3 only one option that is the right one a3 amebias is caused by entamoeba histolytica b4 and uh, pneumonia is caused by hemophilus influenza c1 and ringworm it is caused by the fungi called trichophyton so the option d is the correct one yeah so next coming to question number 192 adaptive radiation uh, which is question is asked in the evolution chapter adaptive radiation convergent evolution divergent evolution evolution by anthropogenic human actions first we'll see adaptive radiation what is adaptive radiation 
so organisms which are uh, presented one region they migrated to the different regions and they they adapted to the new environment so that we consider as adaptive radiation like example for all this it is a darwin finches darwin finches so they go for the adaptive they are the example for the adaptive uh, radiation and what about convergent evolution convergent evolution so here the organisms which are living in the same habitat though uh, their ancestors are different they perform similar function like example wings of the birds and wings of the butterfly both are belongs to two different but they are living in the same habitat that is in the air so their wings helps in flying so they are example for convergent evolution so b3 a4 b3 yeah divergent evolution so like example else the organisms which are at one place move to the different regions and they adapt it to the new environment so bones of the limbs and uh, bones of the man and the whale when you observe they are example for the homologous organs but uh, they perform different functions due to divergent evolution homologous organs are formed which perform different function so c is 2 and uh, evolution by anthropogenic action so human activities human activities causing the evolution that we can observe in the uh, resistant varieties of plants or animals are producing due to excessive usage of herbicides and pesticides so which are not uh, you know because of human activities they are forming new varieties of these strains are forming so that is anthropogenic action so d1 so the right option is c so a 4 b 3 c 2 d 1 this is the right one which of the following secretes a hormone relaxin relaxin actually produces at the time of the pregnancy to dilate the pubic symphysis to dilate the pubic symphysis which is present between the two pubic bones and helps in the parturition or delivery so who produces the relaxin relaxin is produced by the corpus luteum of pregnancy so not by the fetus not by the uterus not by the graafian follicle it is produced by the corpus luteum of pregnancy the right option is d yeah 195 196 yes number 196 scapula cranium sternum vertebral column these are the bones and what are the joints are there or some explanation of the bones are given so what is a scapula scapula is a triangular bone which is present at the back side of the or uh, body so a scapula is triangular flat bone a4 so only one option is there easily you can next cranium cranium uh, so cranium has fibrous joint because cranial bones are attached by like cranial bones have sutures sutures are the type of fibrous joints so right option is b b3 sternum sternum it is a flat bone it is also called as breast bone which is present at the ventral side of the body so flat bone sternum flat bone and vertebral column so in the vertebral column between the two vertebras how they are connected they are connected by the cartilaginous joints they are connected by the cartilaginous joints so the right option is the triangular bones cranium uh, the next one scapula and vertebral column so the right option is the c one c right yeah what is this adenosine deaminase deficiency adenosine deaminase is an enzyme the absence of this enzyme is actually required for the maturation of the lymphocytes and this adenosine deaminase is not there then it causes severe combined immuno deficiency is a disorder of immune system so digestive disorder addison's disease dysfunction of the immune system parkinson disease it is a dysfunction of the immune system it is a dysfunction of the immune system so adenosine deaminase is required for the normal functioning of the immune system okay i will see the question number 198 during muscle contraction which of the following events are occur during muscle contraction has zone disappears yes two thin filaments they come closer so because of that h filament disappear so a band is widened no a band will be remain same this is a incorrect one 
and i band reduces its width yes during muzzle contraction when thin filaments they come closer so the distance uh, of i band is reduces yes that is the right one and myosin hydrolyzes atp to release the adp and inorganic phosphorus during the muzzle contraction yes that is also the right one and z lines are attached to actins are pulled inwards yes z lines are attached to actin that is right and during muzzle contraction this actin filaments are pulled inwards that is also the right one so which is a wrong one among the all only the b so right one a e a c d e a so here it is given wrongly i think a c a c d e <coughs> here it is a c d e so that is the right statement oh. so coming to this which of the which of this is not an important component of initiation of parturition in the humans during parturition to contract the uterine muscles oxytocin is a primary one oxytocin is required to occur the contraction even prostaglandins also required because prostaglandins are also causes a contraction of uterus it causes a contraction of uterus and prolactin is also required why prolactin is required because it promotes the development of mammary glands and production of milk so it is wait for the releasing of milk after the delivery so it also promotes the parturition but progesterone progesterone it maintains the pregnancy and does not allow the uterine contraction so this is the wrong one progesterone is the wrong one but increases estrogen level that is also the right one it also promotes the parturition so this is right this is wrong so entire statement c is the wrong one c is the wrong one yeah coming to this a person goes to high altitude and experience a altitude sickness with symptoms like breathing difficulty and heart palpitation yes when a person goes to a higher altitude and uh, higher altitude uh, the person faces the altitude sickness which includes the symptoms of uh, breathing difficulty and heart palpitation this is due to due to low partial pressure of oxygen due to hypoxic conditions so due to low atmospheric pressure at higher altitude the body does not get sufficient oxygen in the light of the above statement okay so up to here the state the reason is up to here yeah so a person uh, goes to the higher altitude they experience altitude sickness due to low atmospheric pressure at higher altitudes and does not get the sufficient oxygen so assertion and reason both are right and it is a correct explanation so option c both assertion and reasoning are correct and it is a correct explanation okay yeah one minute uh, we'll see the remaining 10 questions vijay bab sir ipen namidi sir inka 10 questions me sir okay uh, already they have typed Yeah. Now we'll see the remaining questions. Ten questions. Let's come to this one. Which of the following? Which of the following statement is not correct? Related to the pyramid of energy, pyramid of number, pyramid of biomass, pyramid of energy is always upright. Yes, it is the right statement. So you take any ecosystem. So pyramid of energy is always upright because it transfers from one tropic level to the next tropic level. So gradually it decreases. So it is always upright. 
the number of number in a grassland ecosystem is upright yes obviously number from producers to the primary consumers secondary tertiary consumers gradually decreases so it is also upright so pyramid of biomass in c is generally inverted yes it is generally inverted because the uh, amount of biomass produced at each tropic level it is gradually increases so that's why it is inverted so pyramid of biomass in a sea is generally upright that is a wrong one because as it is inverted so it is not the upright now coming to this when gene tagging or targeting involving the gene amplification is uh, attempted in the individual tissue to treat the disease is known as so if anything which is used to treat the disease that is generally gene therapy in gene therapy we introduce a gene into an individual to treat the disease and uh, that's why the right answer is this one why not the other one molecular diagnosis they helps in diagnosing not for treating the disease in safety testing so that is only to check only to check the uh, disease how or what is the condition is there but not to treat the disease in biopiracy it is something related to the, the copyrights of uh, biological research so it is not related to this the right one is a gene therapy so in spite of interspecific competition in nature which mechanism the competing species might have evolved for their survival so generally uh, competition between the two organisms that leads to uh, deterioration of the both the species but if they are surviving meaning is they share the resources so whatever the resources are there if they are shared by the competing organism so then they can survive so the right answer is resource partition resource partition so in predation in mutualism both the organisms they get benefited but uh, we cannot say it is a competition in mutualism two organisms are there so one uh, depends on the other and uh, no harm to them it is benefit to both so we cannot say it is a mutualism and in predation predator and prey so one is benefited one is loss and in competitive release if two competing species are there if you release the one from that habitat other one will increase but not the two so two species or many species are there which are in one habitat which can survive only if the resources are partitioned okay coming to the next one the factors that leads to founder effect what do you mean by founder effect so founder effect is some of the organisms or some of the individuals from a group if they are um, uh, left that population and started a new colony then those are called as a founders and the progeny of the founders have the genes of founders but not to their original population which is mainly explained by the genetic drift so here what happens in the genetic drift uh, uh, you know that's a, the variations in the population is decreases like example we studied about the blood group like a b uh, o a b blood group people in that only o blood group people if they are migrated and started a colony so we call them as a founders so they have only alleles which are related to the o blood group not to the a b and ab blood group so that is because of genetic drift not the mutation not the general uh, natural selection not genetic recombination genetic recombination does not lead to founders effect not the natural selection not the mutations okay so the amount of nutrient such as carbon nutrients phosphorus and calcium present in the soil at the given time is referred as it is called as a standing state the amount of nutrients are present in a uh, ecosystem at one one particular time then we can call it as standing state then what is standing crop it is the amount of biomass which is available at each tropic level in an area so it is not the standing crop and climate community so those are related to uh this one so climax and climax communities they are for the ecological succession not uh, the terms related to the uh, this amount of carbon nitrogen and phosphorus climax community and climax organisms yeah what do you mean by amensalism amensalism is a relationship in which a relationship between the two organisms in which one is unaffected but other one is the so one is neutral another one is affected like if you take it uh, uh, the bacterium on agar uh, so bacterium and a penicillium if it is there penicillium can grow uh, but presence of penicillium streptomyces cannot grow so one is harm to the other and other one is unaffected 
so minus and zero so option c is the correct one yeah in the equation gpp r is equal to npp what is gpp gross primary productivity minus this is a, a, a rate of respiration or respiratory loss gives net primary productivity so what is r in the equation r is gpp minus this so what is r r is respiratory loss it is not the radiant loss retardation factor it is a respiratory loss so in exponential growth curve where it is nt is equal to n not e to the power of rt uh, what do you mean by e e is nothing but the base of natural logarithm which value is 2.718 so nt it is a time of population uh, the population density at time t n not population density uh, at the time zero or beginning e is the uh, the base of natural logarithm r is intrinsic value of natural increase t is time so the e it is the base of natural logarithm so option a is the correct one yeah so nowadays it is possible to detect the mutated gene causing the cancer so how can we detect the cancer we prepare a gene which suppress the cancer and we go for the uh, r dna technology and we prepare a pop which we hybridizes with the uh, a person's dna if person's dna has this gene mean is the gene is not mutated so no cancer but if the gene is not there meaning the person has the gene is mutated and the chances of cancer so we go for normal uh, technique like isolation of the cell for first we'll take the cell from the cell isolation of the dna dna is fragmented then separated by gel agar uh, agarose gel electrophoresis then transferred by southern blotting then on nitrocellular membrane we add the probe and if probe is hybridized meaning is the gene is present so no cancer if there is no probe is hybridized the meaning is the gene is mutated so after that after the hybridization when we observe under the uh, ultraviolet ray, uh, rays if there is a, any uh, appearance of the uh, line indicates that the gene is normal gene is not mutated no cancer but if it is absence indicates that the gene is mutated and chances of cancer mutated gene does not appear on a photographic film as a probe has no complementary with it yes that is the right one so mutated gene does not appear on the photographic film as a probe has complementary if it is a complementary strand is there then obviously it has to appear so mutated gene particularly appears on a photographic film if it is appeared then it is not mutated it has same sequences mutated gene completely and clearly appears on the photographic film so if it is appeared then no chances of cancer only if it is not appearing on the photographic film the meaning is the cancer is occurred okay dna fingerprints involving the identifying the difference in some specific regions in a dna sequence and it is called as repetitive sequences it is called as a repetitive sequences the sequences which are repeated many times the those are called repetitive sequences these repetitive sequences may be various type like vntrs strs and they are the markers for identification of an individual so not a single nucleotide not a polymorphic dna not the satellite dna it is a repetitive dna that helps in identifying the uh, uh, this uh, dna fingerprinting okay so with this we have discussed all the questions what are the questions of zoology so next over to mesh mon sir yeah thank you vijay babu sir we will finish off the pending uh, bio part go ahead then sir uh, good evening future doctors uh, myself govardhan working in axaisia as a botany lecturer so i am going to deal the remaining part of the unit uh, paper n6 model uh, the uh, set is there okay already the first uh, the section was completed by the satish kumar sir and the remaining questions i am going to take so in that uh, the 137 question which is related to the the respiration in plants so in respiration actually they are asked about the the etc so whatever the incorrect statement is there in this uh, the first it is electron transportation chain in that uh, whatever the nadh plus h plus 
and FADH2 are there produced. Those are the, the reduced uh, the coenzymes. These are called as the reduced coenzymes. So in this, they will be in the electron transportation system. They are going to converting into the ATP molecules. While that, uh, there will be NADH2 will be able to produce the three ATPs except the cytosolic NADH2. But actually, the normal NADH2 is uh, produces is able to produce the three ATP molecules. But here it is given as a two ATPs. And as well as at the same condition, FADH2 is able to produce the two ATP molecules. But here it is given as a three ATP molecules. So this is only the wrong. So what about the remaining? ATP is synthesized through the complex five. Yes, ATP synthase. Complex five is also called as ATP synthase, right? So second one is oxidation reduction reactions produce a proton, the portion proton gradient in respiration, proton gradient force. That is also the right. And next, during aerobic respiration, role of oxygen is limited to the terminal stage. Yes, terminal oxidation or the final, the, uh, the acceptor, electron acceptor is oxygen only. So that means uh, this will be involving in only the limited to the terminal stage only. So this is also right. So the only the uh, incorrect statement is the first statement. So that is asked about the incorrect statement. So this is the option A is the right option for this 137 question. Now we are going to discuss about the 138. So in this, this is related to the biotechnology vector set. Okay. So the RDNA technology related to the PPR322 plasmid vector. Okay. So in this, uh, the PST1 is actually this is the one where the uh, the restriction endonuclease enzyme which will be located in the ampicillin resistant gene sequence so this will be whenever this will be inserted inserted into that uh, the ampicillin resistant gene sequence will be inactivated so that is called as the insertional inactivation so by the insertional inactivation the entire the enzymatic that means ampicillin resistant uh, to will be the loses by that particular organism the same point as given as a Fourth option and this is only the correct option. So what about the remaining? The, the, the transformed cells will have the ability to resist ampicillin. No. Why? Because in that, uh, the already the PST1 gene sequence, uh, they will be the cut and inserted. So automatically, the ampicillin resistance will be gone. So that's why this is wrong. Now, the next one, it will be leads to the lysis of host cell. No, it is not leads to the lysis of host cell. And it will be involving in the, uh, the, the only the plasmid vector has to be, that means uh, the thimerin DNA will be only inserted. So that is not having that. It is not uh, uh, any kind of uh, harm, harm to the cell. Next, it will be able to produce a novel protein with a dual ability. So this is also not there. So that's why the fourth option is only the right option regarding this plasmid PBR322 uh, will be inserted. So this is only the for the 138 in N6. Okay, next 139. In some members of which of the following phase of families, pollen grains retain viability. This is related to the sexual reproduction in flowering plants. Sorry. So in that, the pollen grains, actually the poesy family members like a graminae are the, uh, the, uh, the grass, grass members like a rice and wheat, which are, which are related to the poesy family members. They will be loses their viability, pollen viability within 30 minutes. So the remaining, some of the other organisms or other plants are able to the retains their viability up to several months. So that's why OAC, whatever the options of OAC is there, that will be considered as the wrong options. Why OAC family members are the loses their the, uh, the viability of pollen grain that will be within the 30 minutes only. So, but here they are asked about the viability for months. So that is, uh, the option is C, Rosaceae and Leguminosae family members are the correct option for this. Okay, so next, uh, 130 question. So this is the statements related question and this statement wise question, which is the correct statement in this. So the fusion of protoplasm between two motile and non-motile, two motile and non-motile gametes is called as the plasmogamy. Yes, that is correct and Organisms that depend on the living plants are called as saprophytes. No, the saprophytes are means decomposers which are depend on the dead and decaying organ, organisms. So, 
So that is wrong. And the next, some of the organisms can fix atmospheric nitrogen in specialized cells called as uh, the, uh, the heterosis, not the sheath cells. And so this is also wrong. Next one is there. The fusion of two cells is called karyogamy. No, karyogamy means a fusion of nucleus and two nucleus. So this is also wrong. So the right option is the first option, which is known as the first one. So that is only the right option for this one party question. Next, 141. Identify the correct statement in this. This is related to the some of the RNA polymerase, that means the molecular basis of inheritance. This question is related to the molecular basis of inheritance. In this, RNA polymerase binds with a row factor to terminate the process of transcription in bacteria. So that is the correct statement. And the remaining statements are what, what happened to this? So in this, the coding stand in transcription unit is copies to an mRNA. No. Okay. So that is, this is not used as a template and so it is not. And split genes arrangement is a characteristic of prokaryotes. No, this is a characteristic of eukaryotic genes. Okay. And in tapping, methyl guanosine triphosphate is added to the three prime end of the HNRNA. No, that is happening in the five prime end. So this is the wrong. So these three options are the wrong. So first option is only the correct option. Okay, next one is there, that is match first and match two. So in this, uh, the yes phase is, what is happening in the F phase? Uh, what is happening in the G2 phase? What is happening in the Christian phase? And uh, what is happening in the G1 phase? So in the yes phase, there is a DNA replication will be occur, sir. A4. Okay, and the G2 phase, there is a, uh, the protein, uh, the protein synthesis will be occurs in the G2 phase. Okay, and the crescent stage means G0 phase. So this is the inactive phase, inactive phase. And as well as in the G1 phase, G1 phase means it is a, the inter, internal, uh, interval between the mitosis and as well as the, the initiation of the DNA replication. So this is the right option for this. So, yes phase is the DNA replication, yes A4, and the G2 is a protein synthesis, that is B2, C3, C1, C2, and as well as the G3 is the right option. Okay. okay, so the next one is there, that is, the match the list again. Okay, so in this, the, the biomolecules has given and the bondings which are present in this. So, proteins are made up of peptide bonds. Proteins are made up of peptide bonds. You know, the unsaturated fatty acids are formed by the C double bond C bonds. Okay, so that is nucleic acids are formed. Nucleic acids are having the, the phosphodiester bonds. Phosphodiester bonds. Why? Means uh, here, this is only you have to take. Why? Means uh, polysaccharides are having the glycosid bonds commonly. But uh, some people are asking about that, uh, sir, nucleic acids are also having the glycosidic bonds, uh, sir. But actually, nucleic acids backbone will be formed by the phosphodiester bond. Yes, P, S. Yes, and P, and yes. So these uh, stand, backbone of the DNA is uh, stand, uh, the, formed by the, 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 the phosphodiester bonds only. And uh, along with that, uh, the polysaccharides are having the glycosidic bonds. So that's why we have to pick that up as a second only. So this is the options for this, 143. Now, uh, the, uh, this is uh, the, actually the uh, uh, already discussed by the Vijay Babasana. Okay, now this is exponential growth. This is also uh, discussed by the, uh, the Vijay Babasana. Now, now, the following statements, so this is related to the photosynthesis photosynthesis in higher plants. Okay, so that is, uh, it is uh, the incorrect statement they are asked. Okay, you have to pick that one. Stroma lamella have the PS1 only and the lack of NADP reductase. So this is the right one. Okay, and the, gram the grana lamella have both PS1 and PS2. Both will be present. That's why it will be involving the non-cyclic photophosphorylation. That is also right. And the cyclic photophosphorylation involves both PS1 and PS2. No. So cyclic photophosphorylation will be occurs in the stroma lamella or the stroma thylakoid are also called as a PREC membrane. So in that, uh, only the PS1 only present, not the PS2. So that's why in this cyclic photophosphorylation, the both PS1 and PS2 by involving, that is the wrong option. Okay. And the next, both ATP and NADPH are same. Synthesized during the non cyclic photophosphorylation. This is also the right. So that's why the incorrect statement is the third C option only the incorrect statement for this. Next, 
the match the following list one and all. Okay, so in this uh, the nitros of the nitro focus, right? So we have thyro, thyro bacillus and nitro bacter. And here the functions of those things uh, will be given. So in this, uh, the nitro focus will be involved in the conversion of ammonia to nitrate. And the rhizobium is there that will be involving in the conversion of nitrate to the nitrates. Okay, so the next one is there that is thiobacillus. Thiobacillus is used as a the denitrification. Denitrification. And the nitrobacter is used as in the form of conversion of the nitrate to nitrate. Okay, so this is about the, uh, uh, the option 147 option. Next, uh, select the correct pair in dicot leaves. Correct pair and they are asked. Okay, in the dicot leaves, vascular bundles surrounded by large thick wall conjunctive tissues. No, these are the thin wall conjunct. These are not uh, the covered. Okay, so these are not the thick wall conjunctive tissues. Only. So this is wrong. Okay, next, the second option is there, that is cells medullary lace, cells of medullary lace that form the part of cambial ring, interfascicular cambium. So, this is the right. So, how they will be there? Means actually, while the secondary growth will be identified, the small explanation on secondary uh, the growth will be identifying the, the dicotyledonous plants. So here, we are having the top shaped vascular bundles are going on. So top shaped vascular bundles are present in these. Okay, so in these top shaped vascular bundles, remaining part will be there. These are the parts. So, what are the central part? These all the part is called as the medulla. So, this will be extended up to here, up to the here. So, these extended parts are known as the medullary rays. Medullary rays. Okay, so in that medullary days, already we are having here the cambium, the intrafascicular cambium will be there. Okay, so now whenever the secondary growth will be occurs at the time these medullary rays cells which are present opposite to the cambial ring, these will be de-differentiated, de-differentiated and from the confirmed are into the formed into the, uh, the medullary rays. So that is uh, converting into the the meristematic cells and forms the continuous ring structure. Continuous ring structure. So this is known as the interfascicular cambium. So that is only the right. So next, what about the second one? Loose parenchyma cells rupturing the epidermis. No, this is not the loose parenchyma cells. Only. Okay, so those are not involving in the formation of lens-shaped lengthy cells. It is not. Okay, so that's why it is wrong. And the large colorless empty cells in the epidermis of grass leaves are subsidiary cells. No, these are not the, uh, the subsidiary cells. Only. So that is also wrong. So that's why the option is B only the right option for the 148 question. Next, 149. So this is related to the taxonomy or the morphology of the flowering plants according to the NCRP. Okay. So in this, uh, they are given the floral formulas of uh, the already four plants or four families are there. Fabaceae, Solanaceae, Liliaceae and Brassicaceae as given. So in this, uh, 9 plus 1 arrangement and the only, only one the monocarpillary gynecium. So that is a fabaceae. So the first one is fabaceae. Next, the two, two carpels are present and the C5 and these all the part, the uh, A5, that means the stamens. Stamens are attached on the, that is known as the epipetalus. So this epipetalus condition will be seen in the Solanaceae family members. Solanaceae. And the third one is there, the 3 plus 3, that is perion, perion, the perion, the 3 plus 3, and on the 3 plus 3, the same, the statements are 3 plus 3 arrangement will be there, and the three carpels are present, tricarpillary, superior gynecium, will be seen in the Liliaceae family members. And the remaining is uh, the K plus 2 plus 2, that is the uh, four the sepals and the four petals and the two and region, two plus four, that means a total six uh, the statements are present and the two, the fused carpels or the syncarpus gynecium will be present in the brassicaceae family members. So this is the option. Sir. Next, 150. What is the role of RNA polymerase tree in the process of transcription in eukaryotes? This is related to the molecular biology again. So, this is related to the transcription, RNA transcription. 
So in this, uh, the polymer is in a pro eukaryotic organisms. Uh, uh, we are having the three types of uh, the RNA polymerases are involved in the transcription. So that is uh, one is the RNA polymerase one, which is involving in the production of uh, rRNAs, and the RNA polymerase two is involving in the formation of hnRNA. That is the premature mRNA. It is called. And the RNA polymerase three is involving in the formation of uh, the small the small nuclear RNAs and as well as the small uh, the subunit containing a 5s RNA and as well as a tRNA. So that's why the uh, option is A is the correct option. B. Trans uh, the transcripts the polymer RNA polymerase 3 is involving in the transcripts the tRNA and 5s rRNA and snRNA. So this is the main uh, the right option. Okay, but uh, what about these things? Sir? So the transcripts of precursor of mRNA. No, precursor of mRNA means hnRNA. No, that is uh, the, the transcribed by the polymerase 2. And what about the second one? Transcribes only sRNA. No, why means uh, along with the sRNA, these two also will be able to produce synthesis. So that is also wrong. And the transcribes rRNA is 28 sRNA and 18 sRNA and 5.8 sRNA. So these all will be produced by the polymerase 1. And so that's why it is also wrong. So that will be asked about the only uh, polymerase 3. That's why the first one is only the right option. So with this, uh, I'm going to complete this uh, the topic, Nana. Uh, I hope uh, all you are uh, uh, understand these topics and uh, the answers also we got. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gordon, sir. Thank you, Vijay Babu, sir. Thank you, Satik, sir. Uh, may I request the chemistry team to be ready? Chemistry team? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. One minute. I'm sharing the paper. Yeah. No. No. Yeah, chemistry paper discussion will be done by Lakshman, sir. Natsima Rao, sir. And Kishore Baba, sir. So request the faculty to be ready, followed by physics. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Lakshman, sir. Yes, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Uh, the analysis of the paper is uh, total 24 questions from the first year and 26 questions from the second year syllabus. Out of this, uh, our personal uh, perception is like uh, 23 questions, around 23 questions are easy. Another 23 questions are moderate. Around four to six questions are tough. That's what uh, we can say based on the time that we are taking for every question and the, the type of question they asked. So this is the analysis. So first 25 questions I'm solving. Uh, first question you have, uh, which one of the following methods can be used to obtain highly pure metal, which is liquid at room temperature. So the liquid metal, which is at room temperature uh, is mercury. So mercury is uh, actually purified using distillation, distillation process because of their uh, low melting and boiling points. Yeah, second question, the incorrect statement among the following, most of the trivalent lanthanide ions are colorless in the solid state. This is wrong as most of the trivalent lanthanide ions are colored. Yeah, so the other three statements are uh, correct actually. Next, uh, 53. The major product of the, uh, major product formed in the dehydrohalogenation of this uh, two bromopentane is one, uh, is two pentene. So when you have two bromopentane like this, so it gives you one pentene if it is half month product. If it is suggest product, it gives you two pentene. So this is a suggest product. So we know what are the situations we follow suggest rule. What are the situations we follow half months rule. So it gives two pentene, then it is a suggest product. Most substituted alkene is the major product. So that is a suggest product. Next, uh, question number 54. 
the correct sequence of bond enthalpies of cx bond is given here so you know uh, carbon 2p orbital and fluorine also 2p orbital so 2p 2p overlapping is more easier and more effective and gives more stronger bonds but when you go for c i bond carbon 2p orbital iodine's 5p orbital less effective overlapping as it has less effective overlapping the bond strength is less so the sequence is the first sequence is correct like ch3 f greater than ch3 cl greater than ch3 br greater than ch3 i next question number 55 so the very standard question zirconium and hafnium have similar atomic radii and atomic ionic radii because of it's a lanthanide contraction so these are the first members i say they are the first members which are affected by lanthanide contraction so it's very standard question zirconium and hafnium are having similar atomic and ionic radii so most of the properties are similar uh, so zirconium and hafnium cannot be separated from the mixture is a very standard question so they are having similar atomic and ionic radii because of lanthanide contraction next question number 56 so what he mentioned uh we you know nu is equal to c by lambda where nu is the frequency c is the velocity of light and lambda is the wavelength so it is mentioned nu and we are, we, are, we are supposed to find lambda so nu is equal to c by uh, sorry lambda equal to nu, uh, c by nu c value is 3 into 10 power 8 yeah others can you meet please yeah so we have nu value is 1368 kilohertz so 1368 into 10 power 3 hertz so if you simplify you'll get 219.3 meters so it's a very basic question where nu equal to c by lambda lambda equal to c by nu he mentioned c value we just have to divide with the nu mentioned next uh, question yeah so if you see the question you you can understand easily the delta h of the reaction is given as minus 4.2 kilojoules per mole if delta h of the reaction is negative if the delta h of the reaction is negative it is going to be exothermic so in the exothermic compulsorily you know the product of uh, the energy of product should be lesser and the energy of reactant should be higher energy of products are lesser energy of reactants are higher so that you can observe only in one of the graphs this is the first graph and he mentioned activation energy anyhow activation energy will be there for every reaction we can't much decide based on this so we have minus 4.2 kilojoules per mole so it is exothermic and uh, the exothermic nature is shown in the first graph yeah next one which one of the following polymers is prepared by addition polymerization addition polymerization see no, uh, nylon 66 novalac and decron these are uh, condensation polymers if you see nylon 66 you have hexamethylene diamine and uh, diamine and adipic acid you are having amide linkage one water molecule is removed yeah novalac you are having uh, phenol formaldehyde phenol formaldehyde so which is also a condensation reaction so nylon 66 novalac and decron are uh, condensation polymers teflon teflon is addition polymer cf2 double bond cf2 is the monomer its a polymer is represented by cf2 single bond cf2 n terms so this is an addition polymer it is an addition polymer yeah next question number 59 the compound which shows metamerism so metamerism is shown by we can say ethers yeah even few ketones and other functional groups also so if you go to first molecule it is c3h8o so i can write c3 h8o like this yes it can show metamerism so if i have c3 h6o yeah sorry once again so c3 h6o you have this and in c4 h10o i can write even alcohols and ethers yeah sorry first one it can't show metamerism it can show functional isomerism but not metamerism second one also no metamerism and third one if you see c4 h10o i can write alcohols and ethers so when i write ether like i write ch3 ch2 o ch2 ch3 this is diethyl ether i can replace this with uh, methyl propyl ether methyl propyl ether it can show c5 h12 is an alkane alkane cannot show metamerism so here the answer is c4 h10o which shows metamerism 
Next one. Among the following alkaline earth metal halides, one which covalent soluble. So you can see when you have uh, the halides of a particular group, you see beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium. They belong to the same group. When they belong to the same group, you know, top to bottom, the ionic nature will increase. The ionic nature will increase. So the topmost will be obviously the covalent one. So beryllium chloride is covalent. Beryllium chloride is covalent and soluble in organic solvents. Next up. We have question number 61. Noble gases are named because of their inert, uh, inertness towards uh, reactivity. Identify an incorrect statement about them. So the straightforward noble gases have very high melting and boiling points. It's the wrong answer, like incorrect one. So our option is going to be this. Why is it incorrect? You know, noble gases are gases. All noble elements are gases, noble gases. So they have weak wonderful force of attraction. As the weak wonderful force of attraction, they are gases so you can't expect any high melting and boiling points for them you can't expect any high melting and boiling points for them so first statement itself is the incorrect statement so it's our answer noble gases have very high melting and boiling points wrong noble gases are having very less melting and boiling points next the correct structure for 26 dimethyl decforine 26 dimethyl decforine so we have here Numbering 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is 4 in. Here it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in. This is 1, 2, 3 in. So this is also 1, 2, 3 in. So only 4 in that we have is this. Only 4 in that we have is this. Yeah, next. So if you see the structure, PCL5 is having trigonal bipyramidal shape. SF6 is having octahedral square bipyramidal shape. BRFI is having square pyramidal. Next, BF3 is having trigonal planar. BF3 is having trigonal planar. PCL5 trigonal bipyramidal. So, based on the hybridization, we know a very standard question it is SP3D hybridization. SF6 is SP3D2 hybridization. BRFI is SP3D2 with one lone pair. BF3 is SP2 hybridization with no lone pairs. Yeah, next question. What is the IUPAC name of the following compound formed? So when you have acetone, when you have acetone, this acetone with the C2H5MgBr. So it's going to be Yeah, the product is going to be this. So if you write the Numbering it's going to be one, two. So it will be two methyl but and two all. Two methyl but and two all. So Grignard's reagent, carbonyl compound on reaction with Grignard's reagent will give you alcohol. Extra 65. The maximum temperature that can be achieved in the blast furnace is around 2200 Kelvin. It's also there in the NCRT book. Next, so when you see this question, the PKB of dimethylamine is given. The PK of acetic acid is given. So the salt, like it is an example of the type of ammonium acetate where acid is weak and base is also weak. So it's a salt of weak acid and weak base. So here both anionic hydrolysis and cationic hydrolysis take place. And the pH of this solution is going to be 7 plus half PKA minus half PKB. It's going to be 7 plus half pKa minus half pKb. So we have 7 plus half. We have pKa of the acid given as uh, here uh, pKb of dimethylamine is 3.27. pKa of acetic acid is going to be 4.77. 4.77 minus half pKb. Half pKb. pKb of dimethylamine is given 3.27. If you substitute... Like if you simplify, you'll get 7.75. If the salt of weak acid and weak base, the pH of the solution depends upon only K and KB of acid and base from which the salt is formed. It is independent of concentration of the salt. It is independent of concentration of the salt. Yeah, next one. 67. Identify the compound that will react with Hinsberg reagent to give a solid which dissolves in alkali. Yeah. 
So Hinsberg reagent, benzene sulfonyl chloride, benzene sulfonyl chloride can be used to distinguish primary, secondary, tertiary amines. So primary amines on reaction with Hinsberg reagent will give you white precipitate, which is soluble in sodium hydroxide. Primary, secondary amines will give white precipitate, not soluble in sodium hydroxide. Tertiary amines, they do not react with Hinsberg reagent. So obviously it is going to be, obviously it is going to be primary amine. So we have only one primary amine in this. This is B. Only primary amine that we have is B. Yeah, next. 68. Yeah, so this is the application of Kohlrausch law. If you, uh, according to Kohlrausch law, we can identify the uh, yeah, lambda infinity of weak acid. So when you have lambda infinity of weak acid like acetic acid, weak acid like acetic acid, we have like we can write from the first application of Kohlrausch law. So you can write like this as CH3 C lambda infinity of sodium acetate plus lambda infinity of HCl minus lambda infinity of NaCl. Yeah, lambda infinity of sodium acetate is given. Sodium acetate is 91. Lambda infinity of HCl is given. That is 426.16 minus lambda infinity of NaCl. It's going to be 126.45. It is going to be 126.45. So you'll get 390.71. 390.71. So it's the application of first application of coal uh, rust law. Yeah, next one, 69. Tritium, a radioactive isotope of hydrogen, it emits which of the following particles? Actually, it emits beta particles. It emits beta particles. When you have tritium, T13, we have, it gives you helium, like 2, 3 plus electron. So electrons are nothing but beta particles. Electrons are nothing but beta particles. So it's a beta emitter. It is a beta emitter. Yeah, next one. Question number 70. Which of the following reaction is the metal displacement reaction? Obviously, one metal is displaced in the first reaction itself. Chromium is displaced in the first reaction. Chromium is displaced by aluminum and we got chromium finally. So that's why it's a metal displacement reaction. It's a metal displacement reaction. Next, 71. Given below are the statements you see on a statement one aspirin and paracetamol are actually non narcotic analogics and morphine and heroin are narcotic analogics, but it's given opposite. So both statement one and statement two are false. Both statement one and statement two are false. So 71 option A. Next to 72 BF3 is a planar and electron deficient molecule. And uh, hybridization and number of electrons is asked. So when you have BF3 molecule, it's a trigonal planar molecule. It has sp2 hybridization. Number of lone pairs around the central atom are zero. Lone pairs on central atom. So we have only three bond pairs. We have only three bond pairs. So three twos are six electrons. We have only three bond pairs. Three twos are six electrons. So it is sp2 hybridization and having six electrons. It is sp2 hybridization and having six electrons. Yeah, next. Dihedral angle for uh, angle of least stable conformer of ethane. So the least stable conformer of ethane is uh, having eclipsed conformation, eclipsed conformation. So when you draw the eclipsed, we have this is a front carbon. Uh, I can ethane. So it is hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. Around this, the rare carbon is shown like this. Rare carbon is shown like this. So the ethane dihedral angle is zero. Ethane dihedral angle is zero. Next up, 74. So is the pressure vol versus volume according to Boyle's law at constant temperature, pressure, vol pressure versus volume graph. Pressure versus volume graph. You can see the pressure versus volume graph. It will be like C and D. But you know, uh, when you have, uh, when you draw this graph, PV is equal to NRT, the slope depends upon the temperature. So the slope will be more like when you write here, I can write uh, P is equal to NRT into V. It is in the form Y is equal to MX. The slope M here is NRT. So the slope will be more when temperature is more. Slope will be more when temperature is more. So obviously it has to be higher. 
sorry, this, uh, sorry, one second. So we have PV is equal to NRT and uh, that graph of P versus V is going to be like this and the value will be higher when the temperature. So the, uh, the product PV, uh, I mean, not the slope, the product PV will be higher. The product PV is nothing but NRT. Here for given amount of gas, N is constant, R is also constant. And uh, here we have temperature. So temperature is variable. So the product PV will be more when you have more temperature itself. So the value will be more at 600 Kelvin. The value will be more at 600 Kelvin. So the value of PV is more at higher temperature, which will match the graph C. So we asked about pressure versus volume, not pressure versus one by V. So in an, uh, it's a rectangular hyperbola. Next question number 75. The right option for the statement Tyndall effect is exhibited by Tyndall effect is uh, uh, exhibited by only colloidal solutions, colloidal solution here, glucose in uh, glucose solution, glucose solution, urea solution, NaCl solution are true solutions, true solutions. The particle size is very small, so they can't show Tyndall effect, but starch can show Tyndall effect. Starch can show Tyndall effect as it's a colloidal solution, as it is a colloidal solution. Yeah, these are the first 25 questions. Next 25 questions, uh, Narsi Maharaj sir uh, will explain. See you, sir. Over to you. CNR, sir. Yes, sir is uh, sharing the document. Just a minute. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, sir. I'm not getting like share option, sir. Yeah, sir. Sharing option. You, you, I think you can end, sir. I will share. Yeah. yeah. After that question. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Good evening, all of you. So now continuity for that 76th question is the following solutions were prepared by dissolving uh, that's a 81 point that's a 10 grams of glucose and 250 ml of 250 ml of water and 10 grams of urea and uh, 250 ml of water and 10 grams of uh, sucrose in 250 ml like that they give in here actually uh, which is interrelated to the osmotic pressure you know so osmotic pressure is equals to just a minute. Yeah, that's the osmotic pressure is equals to pi is equals to CST, right? So this is a constant. That's why osmotic pressure is directly proportional to the concentration. Concentration. Now here, the concentration, just a minute. Yes, concentration is n by v that is volume also same for everyone and also weight by molecular weight gram molecular weight into thousand by volume if you are taking this part is a constant from the question 10 grams of glucose and 10 grams of urea and 10 grams of sucrose is given mass is constant volume is constant therefore finally osmotic pressure is inversely proportional to the gram molecular weight by this we can conclude the statement so more the gram molecular weight, less is the osmotic pressure. So this is the concluded one. From that, you know, sucrose is uh, almost 342. So and urea is a 60 gram molecular weight. And one more glucose is 180 grams. So that's why. So more the molecular weight, less is the osmotic pressure. So this osmotic pressure should be less. So which is uh, P 
P3, right? P3 should be the least. How many? So only P3 with the least. Uh, here is the least. Therefore, we can eliminate these two options. So maybe next. So therefore, P3 is highest in, uh, like P3 is the least. I mean, osmotic pressure of the sucrose is the least in A and B of A and D options. By the way, so you know, molecular weight is the least means urea is the has uh, mostly highest uh, osmotic pressure. That's what P2 is greater than P1 than P3. This is from solutions purely from NCRT textbook. So next question, 75. So which is from solid state. So they're asking the number of body-centered unit cells in 14 types of Bryo's lattice. I think you, you should aware of the all the unit cells, type the types of unit cells, which is a cubic, tetragonal, orthorhombic, uh, then, then trigonal, monoclinic, uh, rhombohedral, and hexagonal. In this, uh, the shortcut for this one is, you know, in cubic system, we have the so uh, simple cubic face as well as the uh, body centered. Right. Therefore, we can take here like this. This is the shortcut. Arthrombic is having all types of all types of uh, yes, this is PI. Then next PC. This is the shortcut to remember types of all Bravis lattice types of unit cells. This is called body centered. So out of 14 Bravis lattice, so body centered repeats only three times. So therefore, out of 14, in seven types of crystal systems, we have the three body-centered unit cells. This is also direct from NCRT textbook. The next question, RBC deficiency is a deficiency disease of yeah, B complex in that B12. So also from NCRT direct statement. Yes. The next question, which is a, a first-year organic-based one, which is anti-marconic rule. So we are observing here, this is anti-marconic. So anti-marconic means, you know, so that uh, negative part of our, the reagent part of halogen atom is added to the, so generally more number of hydrogens. It should be attached with more number of hydrogens. So therefore, so related one is the final product. The final product is, so not this one, not this one. Again, here also rearrangement. In an anti-marconic law, there is no rearrangement. So directly we can select the option. D. Yes. So D is the correct option. By eliminating also, we'll get the answer. The next question, which is uh, uh, directly from, uh, that is a uh, thermodynamics. So this is IP question right type. So CP minus CV is equals to, so R, right? So direct question and IP related based on. The next question is, ethylene diamine tetraesters. This time, somewhat better from coordination complex, direct questions we have. So EDTA, ethylene diamine tetraacetate. So you can see the structure here, CH2N, CH2N, diamine. That's a CH2, then C double bond O, O minus, and the C double bond O, O minus. This one is CH2, C double bond O, acetate, tetraacetate, diamine tetraacetate. Therefore here, we can see the, uh, yes, here, one, two, three, four, four oxygen atoms and two nitrogen atoms. So by the way, unidentate ligand, we can eliminate it. Bidentate ligand, two nitro donor atom. First of all, one and only ligand we have in NCRT text with the hexadentate. That is hexadentate ligand with four oxygen atoms, two donor atom. There is no confusion with the, so oxygen and uh, uh, nitrogen because uh, with hexadentate only one option is there directly we can select that D option. Yes. So next statement related questions here. So that uh, generally here, can you? Yes. Acidic strength increases in the order of, yes. You know, down the group uh, hydrogen halides. So acidic strength is increases because of uh, hydrogen is loosely bonded by the halogen atom. Size of the, because of size uh, down the group halogen atom increases by the nuclear forces, uh, uh, one uh, hydrogen atom decreases. That's why hydrogen releases easily from the hydrogen halogens, right? So therefore, so acidic nature, the tendency of releasing a proton is, HA is a very greater. 
So the reason is size of the element, fluorine, chlorine, bromine increases. So that is the reason actually. So here, what actually uh, mostly the students are prepared this question is always the first option is statement one and statement two are uh, true. Statement one and statement two are the true. But here the questions are, I mean, options are different we have. That's why you should aware of these uh, points also. Here statement one and statement two, both are correct. Statement one and statement two, both are correct. That is. So the next question is the structure of beryllium chloride. Yes, which is a purely from NCRT direct statements. So which is in solid state act as the generally dimer IP question, two marks IP question board of intermediate. So next uh, vapor phase also, which is a uh, dimer becomes a monomer like, but the structure is uh, generally dimer with chain with dimer. Yes, you can see the structure of uh, beryllium chloride in aqua state, that is solid state, then followed by the vapor state, like this we can observe. So chain with dimeric form, right? So therefore, this is the correct option uh, from NCRT textbook, 83. So same thing, uh, uh, this is uh, from qualitative quantitative analysis. So here, the 78% of the carbon is given. So you know how to find out the carbon and uh, hydrogen ratio, total percentage. Yet yeah, just hydrogen and carbon is given. So simply we can calculate 78% is given. Uh, the number of atoms, atomicity we can find that uh, a number of atoms in that uh, is equals to, we can write percentage element into total by 100 into its atomic weight. By this, we can get uh, approximately three point something. We are going to take number of carbon atoms, number of carbon atoms are uh, three, we will get it 3.3 approximation by that three atoms here. And uh, for this, sorry, this is one we will get actually 78% if you're taking this, then for case of Y, same thing. So percentage of element, which is equals to 22 and the total 100 by 100 into its atomic weight if you're taking. So that's a molecule we are taking. That's why so molecular weight by this, uh, actually this one is so like this, we will get it. Or otherwise, IP method also there. So by that also, we will get the 1 is to 3 ratio of the carbon and hydrogen. So that, that uh, exact empirical formula is uh, CH3 we can take. So when it is come to the CH4, you know, that is 75% carbon and 25% hydrogen. That's why this is not the option. Directly, we can select the CH3. Yes. Next one. Yeah, next one. Uh, right option for the number of tetrahedral and octahedral voids in hexagonal primitive. So, you know, so tetrahedral voids is uh, two Z atoms, then uh, octahedral voids uh, in any unit cell that's uh, that in CCP or FCC or uh, in SCP. So, you know, effective atoms in octa that's uh, uh, hexagonal is uh, six. So, that's why tetrahedral becomes 12 and octahedral becomes uh, six. By the way, option is. Uh, here they are asking tetrahedral followed by octahedral. That's why 12 and 6 is the answer directly from by knowing the effective atoms, we can select the option 3. Yes. The next question, uh, which of the following arrangement, the given sequence is not strictly according to the properties indicated against this? You know, increasing values, something here missed, which is a PKA maybe. PKA. Yeah. So increasing values, PKA values. You know, down the group, uh, releasing of H plus is increases. So by the way, you know, acidity is equals to, acidity is uh, inversely proportional to the PKA. So here is, PKA is increased means acidity decreases. You know, already the first question I explained, the tendency of releasing proton is down the group is increases. So acidic nature increases, PKA value decreases. Exactly, this is the wrong one. So remaining everything is, so maybe exactly so because this is the black sheep, right? So next, 86, which is the organic reagent related question. And also we have the previous question, same model. So NABH4, this is the reducing reagent, which reduces here selectivity is important. So this NABH4 can reduce only, so here ketones, but not the ester. 
So every year we have this kind of question, selectivity based. So therefore, the suitable answer is only ketone. Yeah, generally, you know, when are you reading like carbonyl compounds, NABH4, LALH4, or Dival H commonly can reduce to alcohols. Therefore, first option is not the answer. Right? So next, you have the confusion with only, uh, there is no confusion. Esters are suppose whatever the functional group, ketones, aldehydes, esters, acids, it becomes as the alcohols. It becomes as the alcohols here. So therefore, no confusion directly, we can select the option, only keto group reduction part. So therefore, only keto group means C option we can directly select, right, without this. So selectivity based question every year we have. Next question. Yes, benzene diazonium chloride, textbook related. So direct, uh, so benzene diazotization, diazotization gives N2 plus Cl minus. So here this N2 plus Cl minus is eliminated. So eliminated means eliminating reagent. H2O if you are using, phenol we will get. So here cyanide, cyanide will come, iodide will come, but ethyl alcohol gives the, so this uh, elimination. So correct and NCRT, directly from NCRT. Yes. Next question, 89, uh, which is the match the following. Like here, if you know one option, then you will get this. So this kind of questions, uh, you should get the plus four marks. Yes. The first question, uh, that's the first one is a uh, CO. That's a coach, coach reaction. So which one is the coach here? So A should be two. Or you can go with the uh, last one, D. I think any known reaction, we will get the option. This is a HVZ reaction. Okay, if you don't know this one, then you can select alcohol and acid in presence of H plus, which is esterification. So C should be four. How many options with C should with the four? Yes. C with the four, only one option. Directly we can select the option. So when we are dealing with the matchings, so that is very easy. If you don't know the complete knowledge with the partial knowledge also, we'll get the plus four marks. Yes. The next question is from the following page ions, which one is not an isoelectronic pair? So this is also periodic classification from first year. So, you know, this one is uh, all are, these all are having, uh, this is O2, 10 electron here also 10 electron. So here Na plus 10 electrons, 10 electrons. That's why we can eliminate these two options and B and C. Again, manganese atomic number 25 by loss of two electrons, which becomes 23. Atomic number 26 by loss of this one, 23. That's why this is not the option directly. So atomic number 26 minus two, which is equals to 24 and MN2 plus this is, okay. Yes, MN2 plus, they given here, MN2 plus. So 25 minus two, 23. These are not having same electrons. That's a, so which is not the isoelectronic pair, right? So then the next question, which is interrelated with the uh, gas state uh, chapter. So direct to their, what they're asking, total pressure they're asking. So total pressure means, uh, so pressure of O2 plus pressure of H2, PV is equals to direct NRT. So that total number of moles is equals to what? So that's a weight of oxygen by molecular weight. That's a weight of hydrogen plus molecular weight, which is equals to 8 by 9, 9 by 8, which is 9 by 8, total number of moles. Then they're asking pressure, that's why. So NRT by V, which is equals to 9 by 8, plus R value already the given 0 0.0821. The temperature is, uh, they mentioned here, zero degrees centigrade. So 273 by volume, they mentioned volume is one liter. So finally the value is, so we'll get uh, approximately, this is a 24.24, 22, 22.4. So that is a 22.4, this is a one point something. So one point something more than 22. That's why this is not the option. This is not the option. So 22.4 into means you need to calculate. Maybe we will get the option by calculating 25.18. No need to select A and D option. We can eliminate it, right? So this is, that is the option by calculating the value exactly 25.18, we will get it. Next, 
yeah organic chemistry which is also from ncert text only as it is we got so the intermediate which is uh, named as the etox uh, oxidation etox oxidation in this crocl2 first it will attack then after hydrolysis we'll get the aldehydes that's why there is no chance to get like this so chromium related intermediate we will get directly from ncert textbook chromium related so intermediate is a chromium so directly we can select the option d Yes, what about Trinoni? Just wait, I will share the remaining questions. Just wait. The next question. Yes, the next question is 93. So, which is a, a chemical kinetics from that? So, 93. Yes, here. So, you know, Arrhenius equation minus Ea by Rt. You're taking ln, both sides, ln k is equal to ln A plus minus of so Ea by Rt. Yes. They have given here ln k versus 1 by t that the slope is equal to ea by r so ea by r is equal to the given here 5 into 10 power 3 right so activation energy is equal to now so r into 5 into 10 power minus 3 so r value they have mentioned here 8.314 so 8.314 into 5 so almost 40 related answer so simply we can select this is a 5 into 10 power 3 which is not minus 3 so therefore kilojoules so 41 40 related answer so this is 8.314 here is a 5 into 10 power 3 so 40 related answer means only one we have no need to take minus symbols here right next 94 question here next 94 Yes, 94th question based on the uh, first year that is uh, environmental chemistry related. By the way, suppose I don't know the complete answer. Suppose how I will get the answer is, so I know aware, of, I mean, so I am aware of this reaction. So the reaction is a calcium carbonate, which is a marble stone like a Taj Mahal. So Taj Mahal is affected by the acid rain, right? That's why simply we can select C is the one. How many options we can eliminate? C with one, right? C with one only option that's clear suppose like this also we will get in matching type questions so that's a correct answer see with only one one option that's why i'm for me is it very easy yes next 95 question which is the decarboxylation decarboxylation means compulsory lime is required which is lime here coo so from ncrt sir even this time all the questions, even organic questions also from direct lines from the NCRT textbook. Yes, which is a non-polar, non-polarity we can decide based on dipole moment. So the dipole moment, non-polar. So mu is equals to zero, so which is non-polar. So mu not equals to zero, which is polar. So obviously we can go with this, which is actually five bond pairs, zero lone pairs. There is no lone pair. Yes, so SBCL5 like this it will cancel to each other net moment like this mu is equal to zero so therefore which is non-polar compound remaining so oxygen and chlorine will not cancel here also will not cancel that's why spcl5 is the non-polar molecule which is the application of dipole moment next 97 very easy way we can predict the answer they mentioned here isothermal condition when it is isothermal condition, which is from the thermodynamics, so direct question, isothermal means a temperature constant, therefore dt becomes zero. So when temperature constant, kinetic energy depends, internal energy becomes zero. So therefore, here isothermal condition means delta u should be zero. Therefore, third option, first option we can eliminate. 
again which is irreversible process irreversible means one word direction that's only one direction irreversible therefore all in irreversible cases generally entropy will increase never becomes zero so therefore we can select the option so delta not equals to zero that's a direct statement next uh, which is the uh, solutions uh, chapter and uh, directly so they are asking pressure of the solution pressure of the solution is total pressure nothing but which is equals to the raoult's law related application so p not a plus xi b p not b clear so xi a xi a is a, generally they have given here 3 by 5 into p not a is given 280 and here the mole ratio is given so therefore so i am uh, taking the mole fraction like this so 2 by 5 into then that's a vapor pressure is given 420 so hope you understood here 2 to uh, 80 this is 420 double therefore here this is a 168 also 168 total is equals to 300 related uh, what is the value hope this is a uh, uh, 320 320 plus 16 that's a 336 right so this is from raoult's law application again this is also from ncert textbook yes this question little you need to take care about these uh, statements here the molar conductivity they given molar conductivity they given that the molar conductivity is equals to k into 1000 by molarity but they are asking generally dissociation constant yes this is the application of the kolderash law first of all what is the molar conductivity generally of acetic acid is that's equivalent conductivity molar conductivity is uh, for uh, acetic acid is the same that's why so normal before adding of the water the conductivity is uh, 400 at infinite at infinite dilution that's a molar conductivity 20 they given k they did not mention right next by molarity is a given 0.07 then we will get the k value which is equals to 20 into 0.07 0.07 by 1000 yes this is the k value now i am going to find uh, equivalent conductance at infinite dilution which is a uh, generally infinite dilution is given which is infinite dilution initial one is k into 1000 by its uh, molarity so k we have then 1000 by molarity k is equals to 20 into 0.07 into 1000 by so which is equals to 0. Point, no need to calculate these things so simply we'll go you know uh, we can no need to calculate no need to use this formula also just minute directly we can get yes you know here molar conductance and equivalent conductance is the same if you finding molar conductance which is given 20 yes yeah this is a molar conductance initial then equivalent conductance 400 that is alpha alpha is equals to delta uh, that's a equivalent conductance before dilution by after dilution so this is 20 by 400 which is equals to 0.05 alpha then k equilibrium constant is equals to c alpha square c is given 0.007 alpha is equals to 0.05 whole square by the way so 7 into 5 uh, that's a 25 into 7 so 25 into 7 means 175 so related answer we can eliminate by the way So after calculating this as 10 power minus 3, 10 power minus 4, and after cancellations, directly we'll get the answer 1.75 into 10 power minus 5 mole per liter. That's the answer directly from Kolderash law application. Yes, next uh, uh, 100th question and the last question, which is from coordination chemistry. So easiest way again matching only. That's why which is not the difficult question. Directly we can get it. Yeah, first of all, suppose I'm selecting this question. uh this this one iron iron is in plus 3 state plus 3 state means uh, s0 which becomes d6 d6 d5 again the ligand is strong field ligand the strong field ligand means so uh, the pairing takes place like this you know you should aware of crystal field theory by the way so here 1 2 3 4 4 this is 5 one more electron also will pair up then one unpaired electron when it is one pair one unpaired electron is there that's the magnetic moment is 1.73 so a should with 1.73 means a should four how many options that's why we can eliminate these two next where we have the confusion with this four okay 
and three. Okay, that's why one and two, one and uh, B with one. Okay, I'll find this one. Iron. Iron is in here. Plus three state. Iron plus three state. So plus three state and water is the weak field again. So WFL. By the way, no pairing. No pairing means uh, iron three plus D five state. So five unpaired electrons are present. Five unpaired electrons means five point eight or five point seven. So this should be with first one. B one. How many options with B one directly? If you select B, then directly will get the answer. So third one, right? Hope. So who are concentrating NCRT? Who are concentrated NCRT? Definitely they will score. So good. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Over to my response. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Sorry, your voice is not uh, audible, sir. Aish Mohan, sir. Sir, oh, am I audible? Yeah, now, now you are audible, sir. Uh, if you can stop this screen, screen sharing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Rajman, sir. Senior, sir, and Kishor, sir. Thank you. Sir, may I now request the physics team, Baskar sir and Abhilas sir, to discuss the paper and simultaneously explain how many easy, moderate, and tough questions are there. Thank you. Yes, students, this is Vaskar physics lecture. Uh, today's neat paper, if you see physics, there are 16 questions, easy level questions, and 19, 19 questions are moderate, and the remaining questions that are 15, difficult or lengthy, right? So now, uh, this is the way how the questions came. In easy questions, also some questions were twisted slightly, right? Like in some questions, is where when you solve, you may you will get the answer in millimeter, but answer is given in centimeter, right? Like that, some twists are there in the paper. Now let us see first few questions, 25 questions. Next 25 questions will be done by uh, Abhilash sir. Yes. Let us see this. Polar molecules, sir. Yes, this is related to physics and chemistry, polar and non-polar molecules. Non-polar molecules are the molecules in which the positive and negative, effective positive and effective negative of the molecule is at the same position. Those are called non-polar. When they are placed in external electric field, they gain some electric dipole moment. But polar molecules are not like that. Even in the absence of external electric field, these molecules, they have dipole moment. Such kind of things are called polar molecules. So the acquired dipole moment, I mean, they have permanent electric dipole moment, whether it is there in the External electric field or not, it doesn't matter, right? It will have permanent electric dipole. Now let us see the next question. A nucleus with mass number 240 breaks into two fragments, each of mass 120. The binding energy per nucleon is given. 
the binding energy per nuclear. Now he's asking what is the uh, total energy gain in the binding energy, right? If you see it, 240 is the mass number. So what is the number of nucleons? 240. And what is the binding energy per nucleon? That is 7.6 million electron volt, 7.6. This is the total binding energy of the parent nucleus. Now it is divided into two parts, two equal parts. So each part is having the number of um, nucleons, 120, and binding energy per nucleon is 8.5. How many such nuclei you have? Daughter nuclei, two. So into two. Now the difference between these two, that is, if you see this value, that is 240 into 8.5, minus this value is 240 into 7.6, so minus 7.6. If you simplify this, you will get the answer, and that is this one, 216 million electron volt. This is the answer, right? This is based on the, um, you can say, mass defect and the binding energy, right? All of you know this concept. Yes. Here, this is hypothetical case. You can see that in photoelectric effect, you in chemistry and physics that when you send a uh, photon onto your metal to uh, liberate the electron from the metal surface, it has to do some work first uh, in the form of work function. But here in this question, it is mentioned that the work function is zero, that is negligible, right? What does it mean? What are the energy the photon is having? The complete energy is absorbed by the electron. So K maximum, the maximum kinetic kind of energy of the electron is equal to energy of the photon incident or the energy of photon absorbed by the electron. So the photon energy is equal to K maximum, right? And photon energy is equal to H C by lambda. All of you know that. Photon energy is H C by lambda. This is equal to maximum kinetic energy of the electron. What is that? Half mv square. Or we can also write p square by 2m. Let us say this equation one. So the liberated electron is having the momentum P, linear momentum. This linear momentum is equal to H by lambda D. What is this lambda D? D Broglie wavelength, matter waves, right? Study this one in matter waves. From here, uh, this is P equal to H by lambda to just to give the difference between the wavelength of incident photon and the liberated electron, D Broglie wavelength, the lambda and lambda D, different rotations I have, I mean, he has used here, same thing I'm using. So from one and two, you can write HC by lambda is equal to P square by 2M, H by lambda D whole square by 2M. From here, by simplifying this, we can get the relation as, uh, you can simplify this one from there, you will get the relation between them as this one, right? Um, this is the uh, relation between lambda and lambda D. Yes, here you can see that first ZXA, it is becoming Z minus one B. Number of protons is reduced. Proton number of protons is reduced by one. One, right? It is down by one. So number of protons is reduced. That means proton is converted into neutron plus something. What should be there something? Proton is having positive charge. Neutron is electrically neutral, no charge. So the particle which is, which is liberated in this one, which in this uh, radioactive process must be positron or that is nothing but beta plus particle, right? So here beta plus. So first one is beta plus. Here itself you can I give the answer in the first option if you see out of these things, beta plus is there only the option B, you can do that. And if you can check the, if you want, you can check the remaining options also, right? Whenever you are solving these kind of questions, Sometimes, uh, most of the time, you don't need to solve the completely, but just see the, seeing the first part of that, you can give the answer. In this way, you people can save the time, right? In this paper, you can see many questions are like this. Let us see the next question now. Yes, here also, this is also one of such questions here. We need to match this one. First of all, here, basic things where you can get direct, you have to go for that. Drift velocity, that is E, E by M into tau. E by M into tau, it is E, not R, that is a typing mistake, E by M into tau. So for A, it is R, but unfortunately for all these things, R is common. Next, electric resistivity, J equal to sigma E, this is standard known formula. 
So here sigma, the conductive is equity is J by E. 1 by sigma is rho, rho equal to E by J. So for this, it should be yes. So for B, S should be this. So out of these two, one is the answer. Now let us see the next one, current density. Compared to relaxed period, this is the uh, current density is the uh, formula where we use so frequently in solving the numericals. Current density, J equal to N E V D. This is one of the standard formulas. So this is Q. So which one is suitable? This one is suitable. Yes, this is the answer. Next. Now he is talking about a potentiometer here. Here the cell is having 1.5 volt EMF. That 1.5 volt is equal to the length, the balancing length 36 into the potential gradient. Let us see the potential gradient is V0, this equation one. Next, we are taking the cell of EMF 2.5 volt, 2.5 volt. This is equal to uh, the balancing length is L. Let us say the potential gradient will be same. All of you know that this is the principle of potentiometer. The potential gradient is same. This is two. Equation two by equation one. If you do this, what you'll get? 2.5 by 1.5. This is equal to L V0 by 36 V0. Here V0 gets canceled and L is equal. If you simplify this, you'll get this answer, right? This is based on the potentiometer concept. Yes, this is based on uh, viscosity, right? And um, terminal velocity. If you look at the body, it is experiencing weight mg down, which is nothing but four by three pi r cube volume into density. Density he has given here d into acceleration due to gravity. In upward direction, buoyancy force x. Buoyancy force is weight of the fluid displaced by the body. So same volume, four by three pi r cube, into density of the liquid d by 2 into g this is the buoyancy force and this is viscosity force so 4 by 3 pi r cube dg is mg so it must be mg by 2 because this is by 2 is there here and here this is moving with constant velocity terminal velocity it is mentioned the velocity becomes constant after some time so net force is zero so it is in equilibrium so upward force must be equal to downward force, then only it can be in equilibrium. So Fv is equal to mg by 2. Yes. <clears throat> this is conceptual person. This is theoretical, right? Um, uh, why we select this one, such kind of lens of large focal length and large aperture is uh, the brightness will be more. And uh, uh, this is the uh, resolution better resolution also will be there right and also um, it gathers more light and more clarity will be there visibility of the image will be good so all of the above is the correct answer here yes here there are four wires taken they are given that they are made up of same thermal resistance um uh, they are of same length, the same cross-section, made of same material. And the resultant of these four, when they are taken in parallel combination, that means each one is having R, let us say. When they are taken in parallel combination, then the resultant is equal to R by 4. That is 0.25. So what is R here? 1 ohm. That means resistance of each resistor is 1 ohm. Right? Now, when you take all such resistor, four such resistors in series, then the net is sum of uh, resistance of all the resistors. So that is uh, 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, that is 4 ohm. So this is the answer here. 4 ohm is the answer. Yes. Now here, a convex lens is taken, concave lens is taken, convex, concave, right? The separation between them is D and their focal length is given 20 centimeters and this is 5 centimeters. Uh, the focal length, but it is minus five because this is concave lens. You are sending a parallel beam and here, final again coming out to be as parallel beam. If you go by first image produced by the first lens next, that serves as the object for the second lens, like they take some time. You can use simple logic here. That is, you are sending parallel beam from the system, parallel beam is coming out. What is the total power of the system? I'm talking about the power of the system. That is, yes. It is not able to converge, it is not able to diverge, right? 
power of the system is zero. So the focal length is infinity. One by F equal to one by F1 plus one by F2 minus D by F1, F2. If you use this in easy way, you can get down to a very small time, right? So this is zero. F1 is 20, F2 is minus five. And substitute the values, we'll get this answer, right? So this is the way how we can minimize the time while solving the questions. Yes, this is also. Here, always the bodies to get stability, they move from higher potential energy to lower potential energy. Here itself, we can almost get the answer here, right? So this is in all the problems in physics, whenever you are solving, we can see that they get stability when they are moving from higher potential energy to lower potential energy. They want to minimize their potential energy. Then only the stability will be more. So here we can use that logic and uh, it, it gets shifted in this direction. Then only its potential energy will be minimum because the field is from higher potential to lower potential, right? So when it is moving in this direction, then it is going into the lower potential, potential energy will decrease. Yes, here we need to find the force experienced by the electron due to the current carrying wire, right? So you are sending current in this wire, infinitely long wire, and here there is an electron, and you can see that magnetic field is perpendicular to the velocity of the particle. And the force is equal to QVP sine 90 magnitude wise, and we can just substitute the values here. Q is given, uh, Q we know that 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 coulomb, and the velocity is given 10 power five meter per second, and B, the magnetic field, what is that? Mu naught I by two pi R, mu naught uh, four pi into 10 power minus seven, mu naught I by two pi R, 20 centimeters. Be careful, you have to write in meters, 0.2. And if you simplify this, you will get this answer, right? Yes. Frequency of oscillations of a particle under SHM is given N, whatever the potential energy, right? And frequency uh, is uh, N, so X is equal to A sine omega T, let us say. And kind of potential energy, if you talk about half K X square, half K X square, A square sine square omega T. So half K A square, sine square omega T can be written as one minus cos two omega T by two. Here itself, we can see here, here it is omega, but here it is coming two omega. So the frequency is double. So uh, it is uh, two N. Yes. <clears throat> what is the impedance of the circuit? This is what asked here, right? What is the impedance of the circuit? And uh, VL, this is uh, VL, this is VC, this is VR. VL is 40. VC is a 10, VR is 40. So here you can subtract these two. So it will become 30 and 40. Whatever the resultant, resultant is 50, right? That is the resultant voltage. Now we can write, uh, it is given that the uh, amplitude of current, right? That is I naught, not IRMS. So here IRMS is equal to I naught by root two. I naught is given. I naught is given ten root two because amplitude of current is said by root two ten. So here IRMS is ten. IRMS equal to VRMS by Z. What is VRMS? We got fifty by. What is the value of Z? Now we can substitute here, right? So from here you can get the. Sorry, yes. I naught equal to E naught by Z. You can write or IRMS equal to VRMS by Z. You can write from here. You can get the answer. Yes, this is the theoretical mobility of electrons or holes. If you see mobility of electrons is more compared to the mobility, mobility of holes because electrons are in a conduction band and holes are in valence band. They're bound to the uh, atoms, right? So for them, for the electrons which are there in the valence band for them to move, that means in opposite direction for the holes to move, mobility is less. But various cond uh, conduction band electrons, they are loosely bound to them. They are uh, free electrons, that's what they're called. Very less energy is required for them to get uh, motion, right? Mobility is more for electrons, mobility is less for holes. When you ta talk about n-type semiconductor, there are more number of electrons. When you talk about p-type semiconductor, more number of holes. So from that, we can say current in n-type is greater than current in p-type. 
yes this is a uh, uh, here based on uh, uh, radioactivity right n equal to n not e power minus lambda t and here n by n not he is asking this is e power e power minus lambda t and here lambda here it is given t half t half is ln 2 by lambda and from here lambda equal to ln 2 by t half what is t half given that is 100 hours right and he is asking n by n not value after 150 hours so same value we can substitute in this one n by n not is equal to e power minus ln 2 by 100 into time uh, taken that is 150 right so here we can write from here we can write uh, n by n naught is equal to here e power minus 3 by 2 ln 2 and this is e power uh, e power ln 2 power minus 3 by 2 you can write so here you can write 2 power minus 3 by 2 this is 1 by 2 power 3 by 2 this is 1 by 2 many students do uh, can do up to this one here in simply give simplifying this one this is problem right this is the way how you need to do this one yes he is asking here here based on power power is energy delivered per unit time rate of delivering the energy right so here let us say number of photons per unit time is dn by dt into energy of each photon that is hc by lambda here power is given 3.3 into 10 power minus 3 here also one thing many students they do uh, this one by taking hc by lambda as 12400 by lambda in angstrom units and you will get the answer in electron volt for that again they multiply with 1.6 into 10 power minus 19. if you do that more calculation usually that is very helpful in solving many questions but here that method is very lengthy because if you see here the way how he has mentioned this one 3.3 into 10 power minus 3 and the Planck's constant he mentioned 6.6 .6. that means you can cancel them easily when you write it them as hc by lambda instead of using 12400 by that for value right so here directly i'm using dn by dt equal into hc by lambda 6.6 .6 into 10 power minus 34 c 3 into 10 power 8 by lambda that is given 600 nano right 10 power minus 9 if you simplify this you will get this answer in simple way but if you go by that 12,400 by lambda in angstrom minutes into 1.6 and 10 power minus 19, it takes more time. So in such cases, we have to think uh, wisely why he has given this value 6.6, .6, this is 3.3. That is like to make the calculation simple, we should understand the point. Yes. Here also we can eliminate the options, right? Uh, by just looking at them generally the way how we need to do is by taking the cross product of these two because e bar cross b bar is along c bar c bar is given along i cap so generally students do uh, cross product of uh, these two and these two like that but here if you observe carefully here you can use simple logic here here minus j plus k minus j minus this one you can see j plus k minus j minus k minus j minus k is minus of j plus k this is j plus k minus j plus k. They are opposite each other. So cross product is zero. Right? And this is minus j plus k minus j plus k. Both are same vectors. Cross product is zero. j plus k, j plus k. Same vector. Cross product is zero. Over here itself. This is the option which is left. It's the answer. Right? Or here itself in the first attempt. Luckily here, those people who got this one first option, when they find the cross product here itself, they can get i cap. For other students, it is uh, in the uh, option D for some students. Right? For them, this method is useful. Yes. Here, uh, the well-known formula is half C V square for the energy stored in capacitor. Half C, what is C value? A epsilon naught by D. What is potential difference? E, uh, e into D, whole square. So half A epsilon naught by D, E square, D square. This D is cancelled, and this is the answer you will get here. Yes, the measurement is right here, head scale reading plus uh, p scale reading uh, plus into uh, list count, right? Here, we, what you can see here, head scale reading here. Here you can see that on this linear scale and this is the circular scale, right? And here we can write, 
first let us write the linear scale linear scale reading that is given 0 mm plus this circular scale what is the division 52 what is the least count what is the meaning of least count that is 1 mm by 100 be careful you will get in millimeter right so here what do you get here 0 0.52 millimeter this is a 0 0.52 general students select that but look at the unit centimeters so 0 0.052 centimeter is the answer yes <clears throat> if you see this is short circuited right so there is no energy stored in the capacitor it is reduced to two capacitor system these two are in parallel right when they are parallel you have to add their capacitance so c plus c is 2c yes here a spring is stretched by 5 cm by a force of 10 newton so if you apply force it is getting some uh, elongation that force what you have applied is 10 k into x 5 centimeters 5 into 10 power minus 2. so from here k is equal to 10 by 5 into 10 power minus 2 right and that is 200 you can write and um, now he is asking the time period of oscillations time period of oscillation 2 pi under root m by k just substitute the values 2 pi is 3.14 under root m by k 200 if you simplify that you will get this answer yes sn that is u plus a by 2 into 2n minus 1. He is saying that it is starting from rest. So it is 0. Next, s n plus 1 is a by 2 into, in the place of n, what will you get? n plus 1 minus 1. a by 2 into 2n plus 1. Now see the ratio. s n by s n plus 1. That is, uh, a by 2 gets cancelled because same acceleration. And you will get here 2n minus 1 by 2n plus 1. Yes, escape velocity. The formula for escape velocity is VE equal to root 2GR, right? R. This is root GM by R. But here he is asking in terms of radius and density. So we need to write the mass of the planet in terms of radius and the density. 2GM, 4 by 3 pi r cube rho by R. And here R gets cancelled, right? And uh, so under root r square rho we can write here now here it is given that radius is also same having the planet having a radius four times that of the earth same mass density mass density is same right radius is four times so it is r it is increased to four times so the escape velocity it is directly proportional to r when it is increased to four times the escape velocity is also increased to four times yes Based on the units and dimension, two person scale in this paper, right? Here, E by G, he's asking E by G dimensional formula. E is energy ml square t power minus 2 by G. Here, some students don't remember this one. On the spot, they can get it. F equal to G m1 m2 by r square. Uh, F is ml t power minus 2 G m m m square by r square l square. So, G is uh m power minus one l cube t power minus two right we can substitute here m power minus one l cube t power minus two right and from here you can get m power minus two right l uh, l power minus one this m power minus two l power minus one t power zero they get cancelled this is the answer yes uh this is about the first 12 week persons next 12 week persons will be done by Abhila sir thank you yes, yes, Abhilash sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. So, sir, your last sir, week, sir. Uh, uh, it's almost it's over 40 yeah. minutes that uh, we have been discussing. That means more or less our paper discussion and the time that students can take is more or less within this within the stipulated period of three hours. The students who are are listening to this or may listen in future, look at how the questions are solved by the faculty and understand how the time management can be properly done in the exam. Yeah, Abhilash, sir.
Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'll be uh, continuing from question number 26. Uh, the question number 26 is a cup of coffee cools from 90 degrees Celsius to 80 degrees Celsius in T minutes. When the room temperature is 20 degrees Celsius, the time taken by the similar cup of coffee, coffee to cool from 80 degrees Celsius to 60 degrees Celsius at room temperature, same as uh, 20 degrees Celsius. So this is a problem based on Newton's law of cooling. Uh, we can use the approximate form of uh, Newton's law of cooling. That is T1 minus T2 divided by T is equal to K into average temperature. That is T1 plus T2 divided by 2 minus T0. So if you substitute the values in the first case, we get 90 minus 80 divided by T is equal to K into 90 plus 80 divided by 2 minus the room temperature, which is given as 20 degrees Celsius. The second case, it is uh, 80 minus 60 divided by T dash. Let us take the time as T dash is equal to K into the average temperature is 80 plus 60 divided by 2 minus again the room temperature is 20. We have to divide the two equations so that K will get cancelled and T dash has to be written in terms of T. T dash has to be written in terms of T. So if you do the calculation, uh, we get the first option here. Yeah. Next. Screen for me. Otherwise, you can continue. Okay. So now, twenty-six. Right? Question number uh, twenty-seven. Two charged spherical conductors of radius. Yeah. Two charged spherical conductors of radius R1 and R2 connected by a wire, then the ratio of surface densities, surface charge densities of the spheres. So we know that charge density sigma is equal to charge per unit area. So for a sphere, it is Q divided by 4 pi R square is a charge density. <laughs> It's given that two spherical conductors are connected by using a conducting wire. So when whenever two conductors are connected by using a conducting wire, the potentials of the two spheres will be equal. That is V1 will be equal to V2. So we can write K into Q1 divided by R1. That is the potential for a spherical conductor is equal to K into Q2 divided by R2. K gets cancelled here. Uh, we can write Q1 by Q2. Q1 by Q2 is equal to R1 divided by R2 is the ratio of the charges. Now, when you come back to the question, we need to find out the ratio of the yeah. charge density. So that is sigma 1 by sigma 2 is equal to Q1 divided by R1 square divided by Q2 divided by R2 square. Q2 divided by R2 square. Now, in the given options, the charge density is given in terms of R1 and R2. So we have to substitute the values of this Q1 by Q2 should be written in terms of R1 and R2. So you'll get sigma 1 by sigma 2 is equal to Q1 by Q2 into R2 square divided by R1 square. Now, if we substitute the value of Q1 by Q2 from the first equation, uh, we can write it as R1 by R2 into R2 square divided by R1 square. R1 gets cancelled, R2 gets cancelled. Therefore, the answer is R2 by R1. Now we come to the question number 28. Water falls from a height of 60 meters at the rate of 15 kilogram per second to operate a turbine. The losses due to the frictional force at 10 percentage of the input energy. How much power is generated by the turbine? So directly as 10% of the input energy is lost, 
the output will be 90 percent of the input so input power will be equal to uh, power is uh, energy divided by time so here it is mgh because it is a potential energy so mgh divided by time m by t is given directly as 15 15 kilogram per second and g is given as 10 height h has to be taken as 60 here there is the input power output power will be 90 percent of the input power so 90 percent of the input power will be 90 divided by 100 into 15 into 10 into 60. This after calculation we get it as uh, 8.1 kilowatt after converting into, into watts. Now when we come to question number 29, it's a match the following question. So direct formula based question, memory based question we can say is so all these formulas are very common formulas that is used in heat and thermodynamics. So first option is, uh, in first option A in column one is root mean square speed of gas molecules. So that is root 3RT by M. Pressure exerted by a gas, ideal gas. All these are the formulas. So pressure exerted by an ideal gas is 1 by 3N MVRM square. Average kinetic energy of a single molecule, that is 3 by 2 KBT. Boltzmann constant and total internal energy of one mole of an ideal gas. So total internal energy of one mole of an ideal gas, ideal diatomic gas. So for diatomic gas, F is equal to two, I mean, F is equal to five. So five by two into NRT, where N is equal to one. So five by two into one into RT is the total internal energy. So here it is A matches with Q and uh, B matches with uh, P and C with uh, S. So we can go ahead with the second option. When we come to question number 30, a particle is released from a height S from the surface of the earth. At a certain height, its kinetic energy is three times the potential energy. So it is uh, released from a height S this is the height from the surface of the earth. And at certain height, its kinetic energy is given as three times the potential energy. That is half mv square is equal to three times mgh, where h is the height of this particle from the ground. Half mv square is equal to three mgh. So this is a problem based on the conservation of mechanical energy. At the topmost point, the total energy, that is the potential energy, which is mg into s, that is equal to uh, total mechanical energy at this point, which is the sum of kinetic energy and potential energy. So in this question, we need to calculate the speed of the particle at this point. And also we have to find out the height of the particle from the ground. So MGS is the total mechanical energy at the topmost point, which is equal to kinetic energy plus potential energy. But as we need to calculate the height, we will be writing kinetic energy in terms of potential energy first. So that is 3 MGH. When we write the expression for kinetic energy, it is 3 mgh plus mgh because it's given that kinetic energy is equal to 3 mgh. As we need to find out h, we will be writing kinetic energy as 3 mgh. So we get it as mgs is equal to 4 mgh. So 4 mgh is equal to mg into s. mg gets cancelled and we get uh, h is equal to s by 4. That is one of the uh, answers. And also we need to calculate the speed. So for calculating the speed, mgs is equal to, uh, I write half mv square as the kinetic energy, but potential energy, potential energy at this point has to be type, has to be written in terms of kinetic energy. Therefore it is, potential energy here is mgh, but when you write that in terms of kinetic energy, it is one by three times half mv square. Because mgh is equal to one by three times half mv square. So solving this, we get the value of speed. So again, M gets cancelled everywhere. Uh, we get GS is equal to V square by 2 plus uh, V square by 6. Taking LCM as 6, it is uh, 4 V square is equal to GS. And this is 2, this is 3. V square is equal to 3G by 2. And V is under root 3G by 2. 
3g s so uh, speed is root 3g s by 2 and uh, height h is equal to s by 4 now here when we go to the question number 31 find the value of angle of emergence from the prism so if you look at the geometry this is 90 degree this is 60 and this is 30 degree so the light ray incidence normal so it goes without any refraction on the first surface and here it undergoes a refraction and in this case you are given the uh, refractive index mu is equal to root 3 uh, refractive index of the glass is given as uh, root 3 so there are two possibilities the light ray may come out from here or it may undergo total internal reflection and for that we all know that the required condition is refractive index we know it is 1 by sin c so c value is the angle of uh, critical angle so that is nothing but angle of incidence here so from this diagram this is uh, 30 degree this is 90 degree this is 60 degree so we see that the angle of incidence is 30 degree so mu is given as uh, root 3 and if you substitute uh, we, if we substitute the value of C, I mean I as uh, 30 degree, we will see that the angle of incidence is less than the critical angle. So it doesn't undergo the total inner reflection. Therefore, it will come out from the surface. So as it comes out from the surface, we can directly use the formula of refraction. That is mu1 sin I is equal to mu2 sin R. Mu1 is the refractive index of the first medium, which is root 3 into sin I. Sin I is uh, sin uh, 30. That is equal to mu2. Mu2 is the refractive index of the second medium to which the light ray is coming out. So that is 1 because it is air into sine r. r is the angle of refraction. And this angle is what we need to calculate here. So we get root 3 into 1 by 2. So sine r is equal to root 3 by 2, which says that r is equal to 60 degree. Now we when we go to the question number 32, a capacitor of capacitance C is connected across an AC source of voltage V given by V is equal to V naught sin omega t. This is a voltage which is connected across a capacitor. The displacement current when the plates of the between the plates of the capacitor would be. So we know that uh, between the plates of a capacitor, the displacement current is equal to total displacement current between the plates of the capacitor is equal to conduction current. So conduction current is nothing but uh, the current which is flowing through the conductor. There is current which is entering into the capacitor. So dQ by dt. Now dQ by dt can be written as d by dt of Q is Cv. So C into V. C can be taken out. And if you differentiate it, d by dt of V naught sin omega t. V naught sin omega t. So this will give you C into V naught into cos omega t into omega. So C V naught omega cos omega t, that is the displacement current or the conduction current. So we'll go with the option D. Uh, question number 33, it's from units and dimensions, first year. Uh, if the force F acceleration A and time T are chosen as the fundamental physical quantities, the dimensions of energy. So this is a standard question. We have to write energy as F power X. Let us assume that the power of force is X and acceleration A power Y and time. Let us assume that it is Z. And now we have to equate the dimensional formula, the power of the dimensions on the left hand side and right hand side. So for energy, it is force into displacement. The dimensional formula we all remember m l square t minus 2. Uh, this is for energy. That is equal to for force it is m l t minus 2 power x. And for acceleration it is l t minus 2. The power is y. And for time it's t z. So now if you equate the uh, power of m in the left hand side and right hand side. In the left hand side it is 1. And the right hand side it is x there is only m is only with the first term so x is equal to 1 we directly get and secondly if you equate the power of l on both the sides we get 2 equal to here the power is uh, x and uh, here it is y so we get 2 is equal to x plus y and as already x is equal to 1 as already x is equal to 1 
we get y is equal to 1. So y is equal to 1. And uh, next is we can equate the power of z. So minus 2, minus 2 is equal to, uh, minus 2 is equal to here, it is minus 2x. And here it is minus 2y plus z. We are equating the power of time on both the sides. So minus 2 is equal to minus 2 into 1, minus 2, minus 2 into 1 again, minus 2 plus z. So 1 minus 2 gets cancelled and z value will be equal to 2. So z equal to 2, that is uh, t power. So we'll go with the first option. Power of f is 1, power of a is 1, and power of uh, t is Now, when we go to the question number 34, a thick current carrying cable of radius R carries a current I uniformly distributed uh, across its cross section. The variation of the magnetic field due to the cable with the distance R from the axis of the cable is represented by. So it's a very standard question. Uh, many of the students may be even remembering this uh, graph directly. So the concept is, uh, let me take the cross-sectional view of this uh, conductor. So there is a very long current, current carrying conductor. And this is the cross-sectional view of it. So we need to see how the magnetic field is varying from the center of this current carrying conductor. So let us take uh, a distance R. And this is a problem based on ambient slope. So let us take a distance R. R is less than the radius of the wire. This is a cross-sectional view of the wire. So if you apply the ambient slope in this loop, we get magnetic field into 2 pi r. Magnetic field into 2 pi r is equal to mu naught times current enclosed. Magnetic flux is equal to mu naught into current enclosed. So current enclosed is total current I divided by the total area. Area is pi r square into area of the area of this region, which we have taken into consideration. So it is pi into small r square. So from this, we understand that inside this conductor, B is uh, uh, directly proportional to R. B is directly proportional to R and outside the conductor. So for that, we consider a point outside this, again, R. So apply the ambient law. So B into 2 pi R, where R is a point outside this conductor, mu naught into current enclosed. Current enclosed is the total current which is flowing through it. That is I. We need not to take like a current divided by area into area because uh, we will be considering a loop will be considering a loop like this. So the current enclosed inside the loop will be the total current which is flowing through the conductor. So from this, you will understand that B is inversely proportional to R. So this is the graph which tells that B is directly proportional to R for this part. And for this portion of the graph, it is B is inversely proportional to R. Now when we come to question number 35, it's a theoretical question, memory-based question uh, from <coughs> semiconductors. A CNN diode is connected in reverse bias when it is used as a voltage regulator. So it's a direct theoretical question. Yes, it is a correct statement. And the potential barrier of a PN junction lies between uh, 0 0.1 and 0 0.3 volt. For silicon and germanium, uh, these are the two semiconductors which are discussed in the NCIT textbook. And the potential barrier is not within this range. So this is a wrong statement and whereas the first one is a correct statement. So we'll go with a is correct and B is uh, incorrect. Option B. Now, when we come to question number 36, a uniform rod of length 20 centimeter and mass 500 gram is balanced on a wedge uh, placed at 40 centimeter mark. A mass 2 kilogram is suspended from the rod at 20 centimeter. And another unknown mass, M, is suspended suspended from the rod at 160 centimeter mark as shown in the figure. The value of M. So this is a problem from rotational mechanics. We have to equate the torque about this point as this is under equilibrium. So here, uh, this is uh, two kilogram, two into G is the weight, and which is at 20 centimeter mark. And this point about which it is fixed is uh, 40 centimeter mark. So this distance is going to be 20 centimeter. And at 160 centimeter mark, we have another mass, uh, which is given us, uh, yeah, we have to find out the value of this mass here. So mg is the weight here, which is at 160 centimeter. So from this point, the distance will be 
160 minus 40, which will be 120 centimeter. So there is a distance. And one more thing is we also have to consider the weight of the rod. So weight of the rod will be acting at the center of it. That will be obviously at one meter, I mean, uh, at the middle of it. So from here, uh, this is 40 centimeter mark and the total length is equal to, total length is equal to 200 centimeter. So this will be at 60 centimeter mark. This will be at 60 centimeter. That is the weight of this road, which is 0 0.5. So now if you equate the torque in the clockwise direction and anti-clockwise direction, we can write 2G into 20 centimeter. We need not to convert because uh, everywhere we take 20 centimeter on both the sides of the equation. We don't need to convert into meters. That is the torque on the left hand side. Whereas when we come to the right hand side, the torque due to this 0 0.5, so 0 0.5G is the force due to its weight into the distance is 60 centimeter plus torque due to this weight, which is Mg into this distance. That is 120 centimeter. So GG will get cancelled. Solving this equation will get the value of M as 1 by 12 kg. Question number 37. A particle is moving in a circle of radius r with a uniform speed takes t second to complete the revolution. If this particle were projected with the same speed at an angle of theta to the horizontal, the time, sorry, the maximum height attained by it is equal to 4r. The angle of projection theta is given by. So this is a problem uh, from kinematics as well as a concept of circular motion is used here. So what is given is a particle is moving in a circular path of radius r with the time period t. So we know that speed v is equal to 2 pi r divided by t. Because 2 pi r is a circumference, which is the distance traveled. So v is equal to 2 pi r by t. That is the speed of the particle. Now this particle is projected at an angle theta to the horizontal. Maximum height at end is given as 4r. We know the formula for h max. h max is equal to u square sine square theta divided by 2g. So now here, this is given as 4r, take it as 4r, 4r is equal to uh, u square has to be taken as 2 pi r divided by t, the whole square, into sine square theta divided by 2g, because the speed has to be calculated from the first equation, 2 pi r divided by t. So 2 pi r by t is the speed square into uh, sine square theta divided by 2g. Now you are asked to find out the value of uh, theta. So if you rearrange this equation, if you rearrange these equations, uh, here we get uh, 4 pi r square, 4 pi square into r square. So 4 r is equal to uh, 4 pi square r square divided by t square into sine square theta by 2g. Uh, that is the uh, <coughs> that is the equation after squaring it. Now you have to write sine square theta from this equation. So if you write this in terms of sine square theta, we get it. So this four and four will get canceled here. So R into T square into 2G divided by pi square into R square. And here one R can be canceled. So we'll be having only one R here. So this is sine square theta, sine square theta. Now theta will be sine inverse of this. So sine inverse of G is the T square We also should get, uh, yeah, there is uh, 4, 4 got cancelled here. U square is uh, 2 pi r by t, t square. So pi square, r square divided by t square, sine square theta by 2g. So we send it to the right. I think the question is not correctly typed here. Yeah, there should be a 2. Uh, in one of the options. So theta is equal to sine inverse of 2g t square. Yeah, this two should come here in the options. So this is the answer after uh, writing the value of theta. A series LCR circuit contains five Henry inductor, 80 microfarad uh, capacitor and 40 ohm resistor connected to a 230 volt variable frequency AC source. The angular frequencies of the source at which the power transferred to the circuit is half the power at 
the resonant angular frequency are likely to be so here what is given is uh, power is half of the maximum power maximum power because it is at resonance at resonance the power delivered will be the maximum now this is the definition for the bandwidth that is uh, delta omega which is equal to omega 1 minus omega 2 at these two frequencies the power delivered will be half of the maximum power the definition for the bandwidth is that so these are the frequencies at which the power in the circuit is power delivered in the circuit is half of the maximum power so here the formula for bandwidth is r by l is the formula for the bandwidth r value is given as 40 ohm divided by l is 5 so this is equal to 8 so we should go with the option where omega 1 minus omega 2 is equal to 8 we do not do the whole uh, derivation here we can go ahead with the options where omega 1 minus omega 2 is equal to 8 so if you look at each and every option uh, 46 and 54 here the difference is equal to 8. So we can directly go ahead with the second option without going for the calculations here. Yes, now question number 39 is from uh, logic gates. For the given circuit diagram, we have to find out the correct output. So as we know, this zero represents uh, uh, low voltage and this is high voltage. So this is equivalent to 0 and 1 when it is converted to binary system, 0 and 1. So we have to put the uh, input here, like uh, first one is, if you check clearly, it is 0, 0 and 5, which means the inputs are 0 here, 0 here, and it is 1. 0, 0 and 1. So it is an AND gate. So the output of this will be 0 here. And this is 0 and this is 1. This is an AND gate. So it will be one and zero one is given to a OR gate. The output will be one. So for the first one, we have to get high. We have to get high. Now, second inputs that we are giving here is high, low and high. High, therefore it is one, low, it is zero. And again, it is high for the third input, therefore it is one. So one, zero, one. For one and zero, one and zero, the output will be zero again. And this is 0, this is 1, the output will be again 1, so we will be once again getting the output as 1, because it is a NAND gate, output will be 1 here. Once again, if you go through the third, so first one is high, second one is also high. I think with the two inputs itself, by looking at the two step sets itself, we can decide which is the correct answer, because uh, first one is high, second one is high, so there is only uh, one option. First is high here, here also high, but there is no other option where both first and second are high. So you can directly go with uh, option C. We don't need to check all other options or all other inputs uh, because there is no other option where the first two outputs are one. Uh, now it is uh, from transformer electromagnetic induction. A step down transformer is connected to an AC main supply. So input voltage is given as 220 volt. Uh, is made to operate at 11 volt, 44 watt, which means output volt should be output voltage should be 11 volts, and the output power should be 44 watts. Ignoring the power losses in the transformer, what is the current in the primary circuit? So it is a ideal transformer where there is no loss of power. So we can write directly input power is equal to output power. Input power is input voltage into input current. So V1 into I1 is equal to uh, V0 into I0. So what actually we need to calculate is a primary circuit current. That is I1 is what we needed here. So directly substitute the value of V1 as 220 volt into I1 is equal to V0 that is 11 volt uh, into, yeah. Uh, we need not to substitute V0 into because directly this is not required here because we are given the output power directly. So we can straight away take it as 44. So you'll get I1 is equal to 44 divided by 220 volt. So that will be, you can divide this is 4 and uh, 20. Again, uh, we'll get it as 2 by uh, 1 by 5 is equal to 0 0.2.
uh, when we come to question number 41 two conducting circular loops of radius r1 and r2 are placed in the same plane with the centers coinciding right if r1 is much greater than r2 so r1 is much greater than r2 this is r1 and we take it as r2 the mutual inductance m between the between them okay so in this case we have to assume the current through the outer coil because <clears throat> As R1 is given much greater than R2, uh, we know the formula to calculate the magnetic field at the center of a coil. So as it is very small, everywhere inside this, we can assume the magnetic field to be uniform. So magnetic field at the center is mu naught by 2 into I by R. So this is the magnetic field at the center of it. Now, for finding out the mutual inductance, flux is equal to mutual inductance into current I. So flux is magnetic field into area, that is mu naught by 2 into i divided by r into area, area of this coil. So here r has to be taken as r1 because magnetic field to the outer coil we are calculating. So mu naught by 2 into i by r1 into area, area of the inner coil has to be taken. That is pi r2 square. That is equal to mutual inductance into i. So he is asking mutual inductance is proportional to what? So straight away you don't need to make any other calculations. It is r2 square by r1 square. Sorry, r1. r2 square by r1. It is option C. Now, when we come to question number 42, yeah, here there are three. It's from current electricity. Uh, three resistors, R1, R2, R3 are connected in this way. We need to calculate this ratio of the current, I1 and I3. So the question is to calculate I3 by I1. Fine. So here, uh, I1 is equal to V1 divided by R1. Similarly, I3. I3 is equal to V2 divided by this resistance. So voltage across both the resistors will be the same. So V2 divided by <coughs> R3. So I3 by I1 is what we need to find out. And before that, V1 potential difference across this. So V1 is equal to the total potential difference into that resistance, that is R1, divided by the effective resistance. Here the effective resistance is R1 plus effective resistance of this is, if you take V as the net potential difference, then the formula for the potential difference across this resistor is V into that resistance divided by the effective resistance. So R1 plus R2 parallel R3. So I'm not substituting here. I'll just write it as R2 parallel R3 here. That is V1. And V2 is equal to V into, uh, V2 is equal to V into that resistance. So we have to calculate the potential difference across. We are calculating the potential difference across the whole thing. So that resistance has to be taken as uh, R2 parallel R3 divided by the effective resistance. That effective resistance is nothing but R1 plus R2 parallel R3. That is V2. Now, if you uh, substitute these values of V1 and V2, I3 is equal to V2 divided by R3 and I1 is equal to V1 divided by R1. So we can write it as V2 by V1 into R1 by R2. Now substitute the values of V2 and V1. V2 value is uh, V into R2 parallel R3 divided by R1 plus R2 parallel R3. The whole divided by V into R1 divided by R1 plus R2 parallel R3 into R1 divided by R2. So this two will get cancelled here. So you'll get, uh, and even V gets cancelled. So you'll get R2 parallel R3 divided by R1. I'll write here. R2 parallel R3 divided by R1 into R1 divided by R2. So R1, R1 gets cancelled. R2 parallel R3 is R2, R3 divided by R2 plus R3. And one R2 in the denominator will get cancelled. So we'll get R3 divided by R2 plus R3. So this has to be taken as R3 because you are calculating uh, potential difference. I mean, I3 is equal to V3 by R3. Yeah, it is R3. So R3 will get cancelled. We'll be getting R2 divided by R2 plus R3 because it is I3 equal to V2 by R3. V2 by R3. So I have taken it as R2 here. Fine. So we go ahead with the uh, option. It is R2 divided by R2 plus R3. R2 divided by R2 plus R3. It is option number one.
Now, 43rd question, it's given that uh, uh, F bar is equal to Q into V bar cross B bar is the force acting on a charged particle projected in a magnetic field. So here F bar is given us so 4 I cap minus 20 J cap plus 12 K cap. Charge is given as 1 coulomb. V bar cross B bar. V bar is this. So uh, first we will find out V bar cross B bar. I, J, K. V bar is 2, 4 and 6 and <coughs> B bar. B bar is given as uh, B. X component is B. Y component is B. And Z component is given as B node. So Q is equal to 1. So directly we can take it as Q equal to 1. <coughs> so I into I J K two two four B B B naught. This is equal to I cap into four B naught minus six B minus J cap into two B naught minus six B uh, plus K cap K cap two B minus four B. So from this, uh, we have to now compare this equation with the force what is given here. Force is given as 4 I cap minus 20 J cap plus 12 K cap. So the X component is 4. We can equate 4 as 4 B naught minus 6 B. And Y component is minus 20. Minus 20 is equal to minus of 2 B naught minus 6 B. And uh, Z component is given as uh, 12. 12 is equated to uh, minus 2B. This is the Z component. So you'll get B is equal to minus 6. Minus 6. So B is equal to minus 6. And second one is also B itself. Why? Because magnetic field is given as BI cap plus BJ cap plus B naught K cap. So minus 6 and minus 6. Actually, this is printed wrong. It should be minus 6. We need not to find out B naught value. We can directly go ahead with the uh, first option because B and B minus 6 minus 6. There is only one option with minus 6 minus 6. This must be uh, typed as minus 6. So now question number 44, 27 drops of same size are charged at 220 volt each. They combine to form a big drop. Calculate the potential of the bigger drop. So potential of a drop is KQ divided by R. So total potential is equal to, if you assume charge on each drop as small Q, then it is K into 27 Q divided by radius of the bigger drop. So to calculate the radius of the bigger drop, we have to equate the volume. That is 27 times 4 by 3 pi small r cube, where I, r is the radius of each sphere, is equal to 4 by 3 pi capital R cube. So 4 by 3 pi gets cancelled. We get r is equal to 3r from this. So if you substitute that, k into 27q divided by 3r, which will be equal to 9 times kq by r. So 9 times kq by r is nine times the original potential. So original potential is uh, V is equal to uh, KQ by R that is given directly. It is given as 220. So nine times 220, that will be third option. Yeah, 45th question, a ball of mass 0 0.5 kg is dropped from a height of uh, 10 meters, strikes the ground and rebounds to the same height. The magnitude of the impulse, we know that impulse is equal to change in momentum, delta P. 
that is final momentum minus initial momentum uh, which will be equal to as if the ball hits here and bounces back the momentum are in the opposite direction direction so it is two times the momentum when with which it strikes because final momentum and initial momentum are in the opposite direction so we have to write p minus of minus p that is two times p now p is equal to mass into velocity so 2 m into v now this v has to be calculated from this because it is drop from zero point uh, drop from a height of 10 meters so if you equate the potential energy with kinetic energy mgh is equal to half mv square and from this we can get the value of v v square is equal to root of 2gh of course v is equal to root of 2gh directly you can memorize this you so this is 2 into m into uh, v is equal to root 2g into h substitute the value of m as 0.1 kg 0.15 kg height as 10 meters g is equal to 10 we get the answer nearly as 4.2 km kg meter per second A car starts from rest and accelerates at five meter per second square. At t equal to four second, a ball is dropped out of the window by a person sitting in the car. What is the velocity and acceleration of the ball at t equal to six seconds? So when the ball is dropped, it already has a velocity in the horizontal direction, which is equal to initial velocity of the car. So initial velocity of the car is velocity of the car after four second. So v is equal to Uh, u plus eight is zero plus five uh, into four, which is equal to twenty meter per second. So that will be the velocity of the ball in the horizontal direction at the moment when it is released. So velocity of the car in the horizontal direction is equal to velocity of the ball in the horizontal direction, which is twenty meter per second. And velocity of the ball after two second in the vertical direction. So for that, uh, initial velocity in the vertical direction zero plus acceleration is ten after two second. so in the vertical direction initial velocity is zero so the velocity after 2 second in the vertical direction is 20 meter per second and the resultant velocity will be 20 root 2 if you find out the vector sum of it and the acceleration of this body which is equal to acceleration due to gravity that is 10 meter per second square directly A point object is placed at a distance of sixty centimeter from a convex lens of focal length thirty centimeter. If a plane mirror were put perpendicular to the principal axis of the lens at a distance of forty centimeter from it, the final image would be formed at a distance of. So first, the object is placed at sixty centimeter from the lens. If you use the formula, one by f is equal to one by v <coughs> minus one by u. Uh, focal length is given as 30 as it is convex lens it is plus 30 cm 1 by 30 is equal to 1 by v minus of minus 1 by 60 after applying the sign convention so you get <coughs> after solving it we will get the value of v as uh, v is equal to 60 cm after simplification we will get v as 60 cm so by this convex lens the image will be formed image is supposed to be formed at 60 cm but as there is a plane mirror in front of it 
this <coughs> will become a virtual object for the plane mirror so a real image of this object will be formed in front of this mirror at a distance of 20 cm from this because for a plane mirror we know that object distance is equal to image distance so v is equal to 60 cm means from the lens the image is formed at a distance of 60 cm and this distance is 40 therefore behind the mirror the image will be formed at a distance of 20 cm that becomes the virtual object for the plane mirror and the real image of that will be formed in front of it now this real image will become the real object for the convex lens so once again so that will be at a distance of 20 cm once again if you apply the formula 1 by f is equal to 1 by v minus of minus 1 by 20 now the object is at a distance of 20 cm from the convex lens this f is equal to again 30 cm if you calculate the value of v we get v as negative that is image is formed on the same side of this object it is a virtual image so answer for this will be 20 cm which means the final image will be formed at 20 cm from the lens from the lens and it will be a virtual image it will be a, a virtual image it's 20 cm from the lens and it would be a virtual image 20 cm from a circular ring of mass m and radius r a small portion which is making 90 degree is removed so this is a ring so a small part one fourth of this uh, ring is being removed then what is the moment of inertia so the moment of inertia of the new the after removal of this part the moment of inertia is given us k times m r square then what is the value of k so we know that the when a, a part of a body is being removed symmetrically, the formula for the moment of inertia remains the same. So here, this one fourth is being removed symmetrically. So the formula for the moment of inertia will be the same. So k into remaining mass is uh, 3m by 4 into r square. Actually, the moment of inertia will be the remaining mass that is uh, 3 by 4 into m r square and k value will be equal to 3 by 4 directly because the remaining mass of this ring will be 3 by 4 of the total mass. So K is equal to 3 by 4. A uniform conducting wire of length 12A and resistance R is wound up as a current carrying coil in the shape of an equilateral triangle of side A, square of side A. The dipole moment of this coil in each case is. So we have uh, a wire of length 12A. It is, uh, it is wound in the form of an equilateral triangle of side A. So for each triangle, the length of the wire required is 3A. Therefore, number of loops, number of loops will be equal to uh, 4. Why? Because we need 3A for covering each loop. So there will be 4 loops because the total length of the wire is uh, 12 way and the other one is a square loop this also is 12 way and the side is a so for total length required is 4a therefore there will be three loops in this number of loops in this case will be three now we know that the magnetic moment magnetic moment is equal to number of turns into current into area area of each turn so we are asked to find out the magnetic moment in each case first one in case of a triangle so in case of triangle, number of loops should be taken as 4, current is given as I, and area, area of this equilateral triangle has to be taken here. So area will be half into base is A into height is uh, square root of A square divided by A by 2 square. This is the magnetic moment of the triangle. Let us take it as M1 and magnetic moment of the square will be m2 is equal to number of loops is 3 into current in current is i area will be a square so <clears throat> this if you simplify you get the answer as uh, root 3 i a square and 3 i a square
particle of mass m is projected with the velocity v equal to k into escape velocity v, where k is less than one from the surface of the earth, maximum height. So this is a problem based on the conservation of mechanical energy. So on the ground, the potential energy is minus uh, g m m divided by r. Kinetic energy is half m into v square, where v is the v is equal to k into v. V is the escape velocity, which is root two g m m divided by r, the whole square. So this is the total potential, total energy at the ground, uh, which is equal to total energy at the maximum height. So at the maximum height, kinetic energy is zero. Potential energy must be uh, again by using the formula for potential energy minus g m m divided by r plus h this is the potential energy at that height. So <clears throat> after the simplification of this formula, we get the, the height h as r into k by 1 minus k the whole square. Sorry, r into k square into 1 minus k square. You can simplify it. It's based on the conservation of mechanical energy. So potential energy at the ground plus kinetic energy at the ground is equal to uh, total energy at that height. Kinetic energy is zero and potential energy is minus gmm by r plus h. So that's it. That's the end of uh, all 50 questions. Yeah, thank you, Abhilash, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Vinish? Yeah, sir. Yeah. Uh, we can close this uh, session. Tomorrow, what we can do is we can uh, se segregate uh, subject wise and then we can post the YouTubes again in the group. Yeah. Okay. Right. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Good night.